Hey everybody, uh, you may or may not, I don't know how this is going to work, have uh, <laughs> heard a little introduction from Diabetes, but we are crashing Retsu Talk. I hope we had our own theme song. Oh damn, we should get someone to make a theme song. <laughs> I could beatbox, but I don't actually know how to <laughs> do that. So. You're probably hearing this in midweek, but we are recording Sunday evening because uh, we just did our own convention. It's not like PAX in that there were hardly any video games. but <laughs> I bought a lot of video games. They were there. Uh, All the, impulse buys. Yeah, by the way, this is Chip and Ironicus, if you don't recognize us from episode 13. Mm. Yeah, we mm. were in that. And I was in 3 and 3.5. So in this another. is honorary episode 23, mm -hmm. if you ask me. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, uh, we're going to talk about C2E2, the Chicago Comics and Entertainment Expo. Uh, Diabetes offered to host this sort of thing, in case we had something interesting to say. If you watch our videos, you might be familiar with it, because we talked about it two years ago? Yeah, because that's the last time I went. This was the fourth annual. Mm -hmm. I, went, uh, I went in 2011, the second annual, and this year I convinced you to come on out and have a good time. And did you have a good time? Yes. I have one question about the, the last... end. We're done. We had a good time. Bye. Now uh, you know. No. When you went the last time, would you say the last time or this time had more secondhand embarrassment? You know, <laughs> it's hard to say. <laughs> now, see, this year it, it grew a lot, like exponentially. So there's just a lot more of everything this year. Mm -hmm. So while I might say there's more secondhand ex embarrassment, I'd say the ratio to good stuff is about the same. Okay. It's just more of everything. All right. Uh, but do you, did you personally see more embarrassing things this year or last I, last time? You know, last time there was Mario last Bueno. Time. There was Mario Bueno. <laughs> Nothing who is, is embarrassing. Mario bueno, Mario bueno is a man who I think is in his late 30s or early 40s <laughs> maybe, but he has nice gelled anime hair, and he sings anime songs, and on his... Actual albums, I think he's auto-tuned, but on stage he's not, so he's just going Jibuo. But <laughs> Which we actually heard! Yeah, he was there in spirit. A lot of anime theme songs, for some reason, preceded Patton Oswalt and also uh, <laughs> Brian, Posehn. Brian Posehn. And the rest of the Comedy Mutant crew, I figure we'll get to them. So, Want to sort of do this chronologically? Sure. Well, that's Saturday. We'll get to it soon. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, 3D event. Let's talk about what we saw and what we liked and what was funny. Uh, you want to start from your train ride on Thursday, actually? Oh yeah, my train ride was uneventful and I slept through most of it. And Except... I, I didn't. There was nobody sitting next to me. I had power outlets to plug my shit into, and it was nice. But uh, there was the overwhelming smell of ranch, like dip, chip dip in the air, because there was somebody sitting behind me that I'm assuming is a lady, but I never actually saw the majority of her, who. Like, I, I could smell it, so I looked behind me, like, through the cracks between the chairs, and I could see, like, a single hand reaching into a, a literal giant mason jar full of ranch dits. So just imagine this woman's husky voice saying, I'll get you next time, jet Gadget. <laughs> it's just like... It, it was... And your barbecue sauce. But, uh, that was fun, and I met you off the train, because mm -hmm. the wonderful thing about the scheduling is it's during my lunch break. And, uh... And then I had a cell phone call with my dad about hentai. Because he he needed As to know do, he, need, mean, he needed to know what it was called. So we learned a lot about hentai in the last couple of days. <laughs> so a lot of good examples. Well, it's called hentai. Examples. Dad. Uh. Get it right, you pleb. I won't even call you my father. <laughs> That's probably the most notable thing. I mean, we went out to dinner and caught up and chatted about like wedding stuff and mm -hmm. our lives. But y'all don't Adult care about things. that. <laughs> Nobody cares. I care, but I don't. I wouldn't call it entertaining. Uh, so yeah, Friday got up um, bright and early. The first thing we wanted to see was puppet meltdown. Mm hmm. Now I love puppets. I, I like puppets too. Mainly just seeing people make them I or love the, the process. Art of puppets. I love that it's 
it's just a technique. It's a medium that has so much diversity. I mean, there's bunraku, mm -hmm. and there's Muppets, and there's shadow puppetry, yep. and just there's and there's Punch and Judy and Jeff Dunham. <laughs> He's gonna make it puppets, I gotta say. <laughs> But a puppet meltdown didn't have a lot of that. None so. of the puppets melted. <laughs> uh, it was... And none of the craters. This is a show they actually do. It's just a mashup of a bunch of like three to five minute short presentations from independent puppet creators. And it's usually pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Where were the cool people this time? Do they just let anybody on? Do you ha do you, can you just apply? And you there might have in? been a part of the screening process. Uh, also, we have my fiance here. She was with us. She's knitting and trying to stay quiet, but she's an expert in puppetry. Please answer the question. Uh, you have to apply, and you are selected, but you have to submit some form of your work, whether okay. it's a video or samples of what it would be in a written. Or a script. Okay. And then they select who normally performs. Man, did like not that many people apply? Is I'm that how the bad thinking, people got in? I think it's since it was a C two E two right. special thing, they were trying to go for geeky things that would appear. Okay. And, and that was the Pacific probably punch. didn't get that many applications. They were right. shooting for the greasiest common denominator. <laughs> is yeah. the thing. Now it's not to say they were all bad. There were. Th there Three? Were, there were some pretty good ones. There was one that was really good, actually, from uh, an acquaintance, even a friend of Oh, yeah. Yes. Of ours. Yeah, that was a good was one. It created by a guy named Mike Olian. He's pretty awesome. He's really cool. It was a story of a scalp with hair grown from stem cells in a lab for um, uh, product testing so that they don't have to use animals. And it was just this really cool dark humor. You get to see like, a wig and eyeballs fuck. Yeah, like an adult leave it to beaver about the, the idyllic suburban life of just a living <laughs> scalp and, and just eyeballs on a stick. And they had a flap of human skin as a pet. As a, as a dog. They yeah. had that flappy, the flap of human skin. That one was really good. That one was funny, yeah. And they had this guy who was... I, I really like his, the technical side. I mean, I thought his performance could have been better, but the, the dragon in the box? Oh, yeah. It was basically two puppets at once, like a really cool articulated dragon suit Yeah, it was made inside out of... a cardboard box. Yeah. It had all these movable flaps, so you could see one part of the dragon come out and then a different part, and he was dressed as a knight with, like, egg carton armor, so mm -hmm. he could pop out. Yeah, and you could, like, flip the box over and throw red confetti out, like he's tearing his guts out. Yeah. The guy was really into it, too, at the end. <laughs> When he killed the dragon. I think he could... His fabrication is really cool. Mm -hmm. He could work with somebody else on his like choreography and telling a story, but I mean... Yeah, his puppet there was, building skill was really interesting. Because there was no music or anything, so you're just watching the cardboard box yeah. kind of flop around every once... Yeah. Then there was the garbage. Uh, <laughs> let's get to that part of Puppet Meltdown. <laughs> oh no, there was one other good guy, though. It was the video. The dude with the squirrel puppet and... Oh yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean... It's just, you know, this thing about, oh no, my my boring 20-something humdrum life, but there is whimsy in the world, and you've seen that a thousand times, but he did it really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, There's some stop motion in some, there. Yeah. Uh, a nice song. I did like that one quite a bit. And, and yeah, he performed his own music. The, the guy was really good. But yeah, now let's get to the garbage. And then there was lots of garbage. Uh, the <laughs> there was this other video <laughs> about two people... And a bat in their house, and they hit it with a, a tennis racket until it died. That's the story of this video. Yeah, and it was presented like an old timey, like short film you'd see. No, just the the worst silent film, silent film, film scratch, a filmware effect. You can. And they probably had Magic Bullet in After Effects, and they just and threw that on top. Tinkly old-timey saloon piano music. But the thing was is that the music was not as long as the video, so there were multiple times worse. <laughs> it was the just no like. Fuzzy piano, burr, 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 burr. stop, burr, 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 burr. <laughs> it looped like three times. And uh, their and pu their puppet was just <laughs> their puppet was just a, a it was just a cardboard cutout of a bat on a stick with googly eyes glued to it. It was awful, and it wasn't funny. It was just long and. And then in the middle there was uh, I mean not well, in the middle but like in the middle quality wise with those two guys that just did comedy skits, improvised yeah. comedy skits. It was it. Could, uh, 
I wish it was less improvised. They had a couple of good jokes. They, they had just, some good jokes and good ideas that need yeah, to not be improvised. It took a while to get there, yeah. <laughs> but and they appeared three times. They, they were like the run-ons. They were the linking thing. Yeah. They were the most typical. Like, they yeah. had Muppet-looking puppets. And then there was the level five dwarf. <laughs> that was bad. They had a cute puppet. They did. A dwarf... Tight Muppet guy it with was this, neat hats. The story was this song about a level one thief who drinks an elixir of power and becomes a level five dwarf. And then he cuts off a pit fiend's nutsack. Not making this up. That yeah. was in the song. But the song was bad. It was so bad. And kind of long. And they had like a little video presentation and the go. the singing voice was actually like this. I'm not exaggerating. Yeah. And they, they had a... There's closed caption. <laughs> And the closed captions were spelled incorrectly multiple times! They messed up then with then every single time! Also, the drawings in the video that went along with the song were terrible! They was just garbage in MS Paint! Yeah. I'm surprised there wasn't a Getty Images logo there! <laughs> it would have been better! They could actually get actual pictures of men in dwarf costumes! Yeah, I mean, I'm all for, for playing your, your nerd games, but uh, don't, don't write terrible songs about it. Please don't. So after that was the Buffy the Vampire oh, wait, Slayer no, musical shadow cast, so we got up and walked away. Okay, go ahead. There was one other there were two other puppet things. I'm not there gonna was, try to remember everything. There was the dancing robot thing with the Oh that was the worst. The, the two people who were it was like, Oh, we're going on okay Cupid, but there's nobody here for us. Let's build a robot that'll get us. Now at this point Chicks, you imagine somehow. the obvious ending is these two friends will end up dating one another. But no, instead nope. they just build this robot behind a curtain and then and the curtain. They have there. a terrible dance off because the robot is not articulated enough to dance. So they just had a person sitting behind it just picking up the arms and wiggling them around. I mean I get that's what a puppet is, but yeah, you need but... more moving parts for your dancing puppet. Yeah. It was the head, and they just picked it up and turned it around sometimes, <laughs> and they moved the arms, and the other people danced along with it, but... Terribly. And yeah. the set started falling down on yeah. the <laughs> Oh no, we can't move on yet, because the worst was the actually improvised shadow the, puppetry. Yeah. Shadow puppetry is very important in my home. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, do you want to be called something in this? Can I use your name? Because I'm going to refer to you a lot. Fiance. Okay, my fiance was in. We should have worked this out ahead of time. This is the magic of podcasting, folks. Uh, my fiance was in several shadow puppetry shows. One of which was like Show of the Week in the Sun Times. Yes. And in fact, the critic liked it so much, like the image of that review was front page above the fold of the Chicago Sun Times. Uh, so that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> but shadow puppetry is actually really cool, and there. It, uh, just from this show alone, there are a lot of people trained in making really cool stuff out of it. This was not really cool at all. No. It was, uh, it was improvised, and so, you know, you call out, what, name an What's, animal. They started with an animal. Name, name, no. An it, animal it was, and an emotion. That's what it no, was. No, they had to combine two animals. I thought that just happened supposed, because she heard two oh, suggestions okay. she liked. It was supposed liked. to be eight animals. Eight animals, but... All but she heard was those two people talking. So Cat! To make elephant! Feel well. So we had the tale of the most ennui Catelephant. Catelephant. And now we're at... If you know anything about a comic convention, you know that there are cool people. You also know they seem to be outnumbered a lot of times. And they also don't speak up because they know they're outnumbered. What's the point? <laughs> Fuck it. So you just had the most, like... Nerd bait, unsatisfying suggestions to every. Who question. did the cat's elephants he had solo? <laughs> <laughs> but he shot first. <laughs> and part of the cool thing about a good shadow puppetry show is you make cool shadow puppets. Yeah. But since it was improv, they just had to use like pre-made, pre-existing yeah. cutouts Duff. and try to make it work. It, it didn't work. Look, it's a cat elephant. And oh, then... it's a cut off, cut out of a shark <laughs> <laughs> on a box. One of the most disappointing things about that is that shadow puppetry is such a precise yes. art form. And they were just kind of slapping just cutouts slapping on it. Around. They were just slapping it and just the throwing projector. it off. And here's another thing. And there was absolutely no art to that. It was just, mm -hmm. oh, here's an image. Well, you can mm -hmm. just tape that to the wall if you wanted to. I feel like they cut their act short because they knew it was garbage. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a quick ending. 
Oh, like, thank Catelephant for small favors. It was, I mean, it was even that kind of defeated, like, the lady who was presenting. It was like, the <sighs> end. That's your finale, folks. Coming up, the Buffy the Vampire Slayer musical shadow cast. Yeah. We did not stay around no. for that. Did we, not um, want to be there. We did go to the Cyanide and Happiness panel. That's the next programming we... Uh, that panel was okay. That was... Uh, see, the problem... If... If any of you out here followed our live tweets of everything we did on the floor, a lot of this is going to be redundant, mm -hmm. because that's the most memorable thing, is the stuff we shared on Twitter. Yep. But uh, the Cyanide and Happiness panel, if you're not aware, it's a very popular webcomic that has also done animations, and they're going to do a lot more of those, because they had a Kickstarter uh, to fund that sort of thing. And they showed some of their uh, animations that they brought with them, mm -hmm. and those were funny. But the entire thing was a Q&A from their fans. That was not funny. No. <laughs> no. Because Where nerds... do you get your jokes from? What? That was like the joke. That was like the first or second question. Where do you get your jokes? How do you make your jokes? Joke, mean word, funny laugh. How? <laughs> I don't know where jokes come from. I don't want to make jokes of a girl next if door I, like me. If I write a, a, a something on a note of paper and I sleep with it under my pillow, will the joke fairy come and add a punchline? Will that happen? Can I exchange what's my punched-out teeth for jokes? What's your script What's your exchange process? rate for creativity? Help! So between, like, the thing... If you've ever been to a panel, you've heard that question. You've heard, what's your writing process? And you've, oh, and he, you've heard the one that I don't think came up. How do you break in? Yeah. That was in every other one, every though. Other one. Oh, there was also the garbage question. What's your favorite color? <laughs> he liked blue. No, he liked orange. He liked he orange. Right, god damn it. Uh. Uh, but in between the, the incredibly banal questions while I swill my brandy about <laughs> comic convention panels, <laughs> uh, there were just the worst... I think this guy should have been asking how to make a joke, because when you ask Fuck, Mary Kill, and Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, <laughs> you're clearly trying to be funny, but don't know how. Yeah. So the best part of that panel, even better than the animations, which are good, like, hey, check them out, Cyanide and Happiness Animations, good stuff, yeah, they're, they're, was them fielding these terrible questions. Their comedy isn't exactly my thing, but I still appreciate their animations, because you can still tell that they are well made. I really like the one that was really short, it was uh, the Barbershop Quartet the barbershop asking quartet. out a girl in a taxi. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, hello, you have nice tits, and then Oh, the... shit! <laughs> and then they crash into a tree very slowly, and one guy just kind of gently falls out a window. Well, no, because the guy that says nice tits is the driver oh, yeah. who goes yeah. out the window, and then the fourth member is like, oh, shit! Yeah. And they crash. That's great! That was good! <laughs> we skipped a lot of the stuff that I probably would have gone to, because I'm, you know, swilling my brandy at a comic convention, stuff about, um... <laughs> The future of publication and mm -hmm. the thing about white scripts, black supermen, comics, and identity. Mm -hmm. That gets my motor running, and that's boring as hell, so we didn't go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we went back to the, uh, the variant stage. Um, the, the variant stage is the, the stage on the show floor where they did performances. That's where Puppet Meltdown was. That's where a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about was at. Because seeing something performed is usually a lot more entertaining than hearing some people talk at a desk. Yeah. Especially if you're in it for that uh, schadenfreude, a secondhand embarrassment. <laughs> so we went downstairs to Kill Shakespeare dramatic stage reading. This is another thing we have friends slash acquaintances working in. Uh, there's a graphic novel called Kill Shakespeare. It's about, it's the League of Extraordinary Shakespeare characters, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they turned this graphic novel into a staged reading, and they did an excerpt from it, and it was... A lot of the problems I had come down with the script. Maybe if I read Kill Shakespeare, I'd like it better. Yeah. But the actual performers were good, they although were it was... They were it their all. I think they were giving it a little too much of their all. Like, they were doing these big, boisterous radio drama voices. And it's kind of weird to hear that when you can when see them. When you can them. see their face. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we... Those things sort of overlapped, so we got there right as old King Hamlet was just screaming, Blood! For two that minutes. That guy was my favorite... He had a really good throaty gurgly blood for a minute straight, and all, and then and I then looked at projector, and then it crossfaded <laughs> into sex noises. They did an audio crossfade. These guys are pros. 
<laughs> I really enjoyed that the blood screaming was accompanied with the picture, like a panel of... of what, like him like, tearing his face apart? Was it apart? Hamlet's dad? Yeah, of just tearing skin off his face. And that was... Ghost face. I was happy that was the first thing I saw, because that is metal as hell. <laughs> he is his own ghost face killer. It's amazing. <laughs> So that was that was fun. I'd be more interested in seeing their regular staging rather yeah. than that thrown together promotional staging. Mm -hmm. It's a very weird setting. Or it. reading the book. That that half and half kind of left me a bit cold, but mm, yeah, better than what came next. Do you recall what came next? It's a blur. What happened? <laughs> the stand up, stand up. Oh show. yes. Oh my god, that was, I think that was actually <laughs> that my was the favorite, worst thing. that was my favorite thing of the day, because it was so bad. We're, just, for anybody who's ready to turn it off because we're being so negative, Saturday's programming, and today's, was very Sunday's good. programming, very good. Everything we went to was also, good. Also, the show floor, the vendors, Artist Alley, Signature Line, really good. Lots of people's, the majority of people's costumes, also great. Friday's programming, or at least the bits we took in, not very good. No. A lot of the secondhand embarrassment was on Friday. <laughs> Get it out of the way. So Stand Up, Stand Up is um, a series of stand-up shows, local, just starting out comedians, you know, the comedians of tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. good, good thing that comedians of today are funny. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, everybody's, about that. I think just about everybody starting out is pretty not good. So, I mean... If, yeah. if, if the, any of those guys will become good, it's because they, they don't get embarrassed when they have a bad showing, which was everyone to, <laughs> yeah. at that showing. They, I will say they all, had, they all had minimum one good joke. If you took every single Maximum joke... Maximum three. <laughs> if you took every <laughs> single good joke from each person and put them you all together... You could a set. You, could have, you would have one good set. Actually, I'm not sure everyone had a joke. Because uh, those t those sisters in the spandex Ugh. animal suits, yeah, they did not have jokes. They had shtick, and yeah. it did not land for me one bit. No, when they came on, I was hopeful. They're for ironic some reason. about being hipsters. Where do you go from they there? They were in skin tight leopard print body suits. One was a zebra, thank you. Very oh, much. that's right. One was a zebra. <laughs> they were. They looked like they might have been nice people. I don't. know. I don't think they ever crossed into funny. They were consistently amusing. Yeah, yeah. So I, they were consistent at something. Just reminded me of some really drunk slash high theater people. Yeah. That are just hanging out on a Saturday night in costume on Halloween. <laughs> like, that's really what their skit was. Yeah. yeah. But they were one of the last acts. They were one of the last. They had a. Uh, oh! Something I'm looking at, I'm reminded. The thing that kept people entertained is one of the guys actually has a writing gig with Dark Horse Comics. Mm -hmm. And so they had some cool stuff to give away, like the Hyrule Historia and the Bioshock Infinite art book. I really wanted to win one of those, but... Instead he bought Instead them. I spent $80 <laughs> buying both. We did not win them, but uh, no. that's, that's what kept people in their seats. <laughs> uh... Every uh, I I learned that every stand up comic in Chicago is unemployed. Yeah, except uh. they're stand up comics and they have gigs regularly at places, so they must be getting something in compensation. Uh, free drinks, I suppose. I I hope that's at least. I learned so much about working at Halloween USA. I learned yep. a lot about getting fired from restaurants. Yep. I learned a lot about getting fired from uh, from offices. Yep. I know everything I need to know to get fired in Chicago. I, I kept wondering because all those people must have known each other or something. Yeah. I was was like there somebody in the back just oh fuck my unemployment jokes. Oh god damn it! God, no, no. Ah. it's been three rows of unemployment all I know jokes. Is unemployment. Well, if you did notice, the last few comedians had much shorter time on the stage, I think the so I think they might have started cutting. Yeah, there was one good one. There was one that I would say was good. He was the one who had the wife and kid. And he had really good jokes about his wife and kid. Oh, I can't remember about those. How um, when a baby comes home, I don't know who the hell this kid is. <laughs> what? Oh yeah. Why am I hang? I I like him enough so he can suck on my wife's boobs. I he's really charming. You can tell. I would not let any of that you guy was suck all on right. my wife's boobs. He seems that was the best joke of the whole like hour. <laughs> yeah, that guy seems like if he worked more, he could be funny. Yeah, because he had at least had some kind of personality and voice behind his stuff. And like everybody else, where it was like, mm, uh, they all had that kind. 
I don't even know how to explain it. What, people who are, like, amateur comedians, they always have this kind of, yeah, I know, yeah, yeah, like, in between their jokes. Mm -hmm. And it's always he, he the had same. A, he had a flow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, basically, what we're saying is stand up, stand up. If we had a time machine, like, if we had an <laughs> inkling of what would have happened, we would have been in the front row with a camcorder, and you'd be seeing a riff video of us just, like, yeah. internet hackling them. Yeah. We need to talk some about some of the bad jokes, though. Oh, uh, yeah. There uh, one, one the guy guys, who stuck in my mind the most was, like, the third the guy. The meatball guy? The meatball man. Fuck him and his meatballs. He just gets one of his first things he talks about. is like, yeah, so I grew up in a racist, racist family. Three jokes later, he's talking about black people at the movie theater. So, how, you know how black people like to talk about movies? Go like, oh, he's going to get killed. Well... Well, he got us free stuff, because whatever movie they were seeing was, like, the film burned or something. I think it was episode one in the film episode, burned, right yeah. during the, the title crawl, which I doubt, thank you very much. Mm. Mm, no. Yeah. And, and there was just this bullshit about meatballs, just him eating meatballs. And th Oh, the worst thing, though, was, aside from that, there was one guy sitting, like, in front of us and to the left who fucking loved the meatball <laughs> jokes. He was the only one, and he was laughing so loudly. His diet must consist solely of meatballs to find this funny. So that's stand up, stand up. My blood pressure it won't let me talk about that. Yeah, anymore. so my family was racist and uh, so am I. I'm racist uh, too. How about those black people? But he got us free stuff, so that was cool with me. No, he didn't get him free stuff because he asked for a super combo, and there's no. Oh, oh that's right. It was combo. a combo joke. Yeah, yeah meatballs every, and combos, a double whammy. Everybody loves those biased Coke, get your popcorn fifty cents off jokes. Damn, mm. that's the comedy goal. So then it was beer and comics panel, the first interesting thing we that saw. That was the first interesting thing, because there was like a panel last time you went that was yeah, food uh, and comics. Yeah, when I was comics. there two years ago, there's food and comics, and I went just to find and out. And they weren't prepared. Well, for two reasons, to find out what the hell is the deal with food and comics, what do you talk about? Mm -hmm. The answer is, they didn't know either. <laughs> and second thing, Rick Bayless was on the panel, and if you don't know Rick Bayless, he won um, Master Chef or was it Top Chef? He's like a seriously awesome chef. He's yeah. got three restaurants in the city, and they're amazing. If you're ever in the city... He makes the best Mexican food ever. Yeah. He travels um, to Mexico, like, All the time. He's got, like, two shows on PBS. Okay. Dudes, uh, get a sandwich at Choco. Get, um, just blow all your cash at Frontera Grill or Topo La Bombo if, if you're into more finer dining. Get the cheesecake. Holy the shit. Cheesecake you if you go to Frontera Grill, get the goddamn cheesecake, you <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Oh. The best thing ever. So we had fond memories of that panel, and so we went to this year. They had beer and comics because uh, we were hoping there was free beer or beer coupons, but there it wasn't. Uh, but they, either. they did have. Uh, there's a pretty big craft brewing scene in Chicago, mm -hmm. as well as uh, if you're in New York, you know all about that. Um, like Los Angeles, San Francisco is bound to have like a million breweries, yeah. right? Yeah. So we got an ass load here in Chicago. And they're all really good. So they had people from Revolution who actually brewed a specific beer for the show. Uh, they had three Floyds, and they had a, um, a Goose Island guy who they kept calling the Grey Goose guy and <laughs> hung his head in shame. Rather different beverage. Um, and they had Brian Azzarello from, <laughs> from Image Comics. <laughs> Uh, and and the Marvel talent scout who actually yeah. organized the food in comics panel. He's all, he's a talent scout for Marvel comics and a food blogger and a beer enthusiast because he's a grown man. And they almost all had nice beards. They were yes. incredibly bearded. And that also was, bald. I don't have many specific memories other than them just being really. They were cool people. They were cool blue collar dudes, man. Yeah. Making my my, I'm a tradesman. I make beer. I read comics, and I love to brew, man. I'm I wish I could have an occupation where I said I'm a tradesman, like I'm, in the, <laughs> like I'm some medieval asshole. <laughs> Except he didn't come off as much of an asshole. Yeah. If maybe if he had some more of his product in him, he could. Have. <laughs> but that's good. Like if you're ever in a edible thing and comics panel, check it out. They're usually nice stuff. And then, actually, my favorite panel of the night was the last one. Dread and Beyond, the whole that wide was a world good of 2000 panel, AD. Especially considering I knew nothing about AD, 2000, 2000 AD, AD or, or, Dread. Judge, or Dread. You're seeing that movie, Yeah, and now friend. I'm just going to see that movie, and I also have a Dread book, and I also if have a If anyone at home hasn't seen the film Dread, starring uh, Carl Urban, 
It did not do well at the Get box off office, but it it's sounds amazing. great. It um, is one of so, the best movies of last year. Absolutely. Uh, and if you narrow it down to action movies, the best? I'd say it's the best. Best action yeah. movie, best uh, comic movie. Best licensed movie, maybe even. Doesn't some guy get shot in the face and the bullet comes out of his cheek too? Okay, in slow motion. Here's something I love. Here's something I love about Dread. Uh, Dread is entirely faceless. In fact, they it never takes his helmet off. Is in, the... in the contract for the film, Dread cannot take his helmet off. Yeah, uh, he is just the the living embodiment of the law of Mega City One. He has no individuality whatsoever. The criminals all are very individual. They're they're very defined. Uh, unique characters, and a running theme through the film is most of the violence Dread commits is against people's faces, erasing <laughs> their individuality, and reducing them from from these unique people to just suspects who are now serving their punishment, which is invariably the death sentence because they are very bad men. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and women. But like everyone gets their face fucked up. Oh God. And it's a really cool artistic decision, as well as, you know, that visceral, yeah, blow his goddamn face off, Dread, you know? <laughs> it's a great movie. I love it for so many reasons. Um, so they talked about that. They talked about upcoming news. They talked about uh, everything that isn't Dread, because 2000 AD is an mm -hmm. anthology book. It is uh, just eight pages of one thing, five pages of the next, ten pages of thing number three, all through the magazine, and it's great. It comes out weekly. And it's been going since 1975, man. Those English people are nuts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also incredibly enthusiastic about those books. Man, those guys were super charming. I, I, was, I was saying today, I think a requirement of working for 2000 AD is like you have to have in your resume. Started reading at age 12, never stopped. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> uh, we went to their, back to their booth uh, Saturday when we did our big shopping run. And I just wanted to congratulate the guy. Like, hey, uh, nice job uh, on the panel. I'd like to just sort of, like, what, what's a good gateway book? He talked for 20 minutes. He sold he us four books. He talked our ears off. We, I bought two books. <laughs> I bought a book. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't not buy a book after that. <laughs> just imagine what, he, what that would be like. He does all of that for 20 minutes. And like, so, yeah. I don't think so. What? <laughs> you can't do that. About so, yeah. every book that we could have possibly bought on so, the yeah, table. I mean, between the three of us, there's two households, basically. Mm. Uh, you bought uh, Dredd's Collected Case Files Volume 3 yeah. and uh, Halo Jones. Halo Jones, which I is, really like the sound of that one. Yeah, it's he described it, like the cell, the, the, the PR guy. The as, strong female uh, protagonist. I was going to say he described it as Alan Moore's finest work. Okay. Which, I mean, for the folks at home, the first comic I ever bought was Watchmen. Yeah. I'm looking up, I'm, I'm seeing Leave Extraordinary Gentlemen, I'm looking V for Vendetta at my shelf. That's... I'm excited to read it. I'm really pumped. As well as, you know, the interesting thing about the character and the place she holds in, like, comic history. Um, I'm time jumping. So that's fr also Friday, non-programming. Um, non that was the day we set out and saw as much of the floor as we could. Yeah. Cause we went, like, just about everywhere. The, the plan was for, like, object sensory lo overload on Friday to oh prepare us for person sensory overload on Saturday, which is, like, when the population triples. Oh, God. <laughs> just by virtue of being Saturday. <laughs> uh, so much stuff. You want to talk? We... There was lots of neat stuff you could buy, but so I forgot much. what most of it was, like... and really all I can remember is that, one, you could there was an entire side of the room where you could just get Wonder Woman tattooed on you. <laughs> Like yeah. actual tattoos, not there fake was a tattoos. Whole cut out of I like kept hearing like fifteen tattoo artists. I kept hearing all this buzzing. Like, what is that? It sounds like ta and there were actual tattoo artists there. It's like, man, this just seems a little I, weird. I like how organized it was because like, very organized. Um, fan organizations had their own cubby. There's like the five hundred first and Brony Con. Yeah, the Brony Con panel was and, right next to it. Um, like all these other fan groups, like I don't know, Star Trek. Register Fan yeah. Appreciation Chicago Society. Cosplay. Yeah, Chicago Cosplay. They all had their own nook, and all the comic sellers had their their own region, and all the people who were just, like, doing a flea market of their rare and vintage... Can they hear my air quotes? 
Uh, He's doing air quotes. I'm doing a really hard. Oh, you know, hard. you can buy the official DVD of Seinfeld bloopers. I mean, the cover was in like 72 DPI, so it looked like ass. But I mean, it definitely didn't come from some I, guy's inkjet printer. I really that was official appreciate, art of Seinfeld. I do appreciate all the gray market DVD sellers because you got some weird shit in there. You could have bought the entire Japanese series of Supida Man. Yeah, it was even spelled that way, Supida Man with a hyphen. If I had more uh, free cash, I, I would have been tempted by that. I, yeah. But then I probably would have bought the but also, probably uh, not official release of all s six uh, if, Star Trek If you want to watch Japanese Spider-Man, I'm pretty sure Marvel's site actually yeah, has nearly every streaming. episode for free. Yeah. So. <laughs> also, check out Anime Theater on ChipandIronicus.com. We've We're hosted on Daily Motion, so there's a shitload of shitty ads, so she, just please turn ad blocker on those, because I don't even make money on those anyways. Yeah. <laughs> um... See, I wanna, uh, well, there was all of the porn. There was lots of porn. You, there was at a con. You expect a lot of like cheesecake. You expect a lot of pinups. You expect a lot of hentai. Unfortunately, this was fucking porn. This is just straight the, up. The entire porn. back right corner was just the porn place. <laughs> and it was there was the I'm guy. Not, I'm not excusing how prevalent all all the other things are, but you. It's at least like, yes, I'm probably going to see this, but this is just porn! The hentai was right out there. It just had a, Like, it wasn't covered up with tarps or anything, or it was just like, hey, 18 plus, check out all this hentai. And you're taking people for a minute. The sun's going down. I'm turning on a light. Okay. Um, <laughs> I like the one that had the cardboard, like, sticking out around it, like, with the go. warning, 18 plus. Yeah. Yes. Your ID. Yeah. To look at, do not touch. It just not. seems like a really weird product, because there were people looking through it. And a lot, some of them did defy what I, you know, you expect somebody looking through hentai, like, legitimately. And they looked slightly more normal. It was weird. And I just kept imagining, like, you got this guy who's brought hentai in boxes, and he wants you to give him money so that you can buy the anime porn that you either collect or jack off to or both. And then you, it's like you gotta touch it and you gotta pull out of the box. It's like, mm, yeah, I like that anime. And then you gotta take the money out of your wallet that was in your pocket. And then you gotta hand it to the guy and you gotta make eye contact with him. And it's like, that's a hentai peddler. And he's like, yeah, I'm selling you the hentai. And there, and the guy's probably like, and that's just a business, that's a business thing they just did. And there's no shame involved. What do you call that act? Oh. I purchased hentai. <laughs> So yeah, the, the light's on, I'm back. Good oh, job. Oh, I also what I, what else I really liked was that the hentai was right next to the swords. <laughs> <laughs> there were like ten people selling swords. There were like ten different sword peddlers. You could, you could get your medieval swords. You, you could, could buy keyblades! Fantasy swords, you could get your keyblades. You design. could get a buster sword! Half of them had katanas, some of yeah. them were exclusively katana. <laughs> some of them were pretty cheap too, like thirty dollars. <laughs> That's not true Hanzo Steel. That's like no. Hanze, the, the, the knockoff. Yeah. Oh, and more Bandai Steel. <laughs> There's another guy that we passed once on Friday oh. and again on Sunday who was selling like cheesecake porn that was like more like yes. the, uh, kind of like, uh, like 50s horror movie yeah, style. Yeah, it, it, like the freaking weird, like Vincent Price. Yeah. Che it was like all cheesy film sort of. grain and kind of blown out a little. But the... But that's just around the women. The women were all incredibly scantily clad and yeah. airbrushed perfection. And there was like this little like view scope you could put your eyeballs into. Because it's in 3D! And you could watch the 3D cheesecake like porn. Oh. But the worst thing was just you, we walked by the guy the first time not really knowing what exactly he was selling. Oh, I could sell. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, but, but you didn't like the extent of it and also like yeah. the names of them. And I can't... <sighs> Is Dr. Something Skeezy? I can't remember... And the, the jailbait surgeon. No, he, he was the jailbait surgeon. The jailbait surgeon. And we walked right by him, and he's like, Oh, yeah, you should check this one out, you know, the jailbait surgeon. And the guy's like, Yeah, yeah, but think about that one. <laughs> no, you haven't. Please say you haven't. Oh, so the floor's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. But uh, also, you know, in the center, they have, like, the big name, your, your comics publishers. DC didn't have a booth. I was really That was upset. surprising. The Marvel booth was like Party City, man. That was yeah. hopping. They kept it busy. Right next door to the Arkea booth, which I'm going to talk about when we get to Sunday, because I love those people. Mm -hmm. I love Arkea books. Um, and Dark Horse had a really cool thing. Just a, a lot of... I guess with DC gone, it freed up a lot of space for indie people to really put their best foot forward. Not necessarily indie, but like 
second string, I guess. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not an expert in the comic publishing industry. Uh, so, I guess, let's skip to Saturday. First thing we saw Saturday was Patton Oswalt's Q&A in the IGN Patton theater. Patton Oswalt rules. I love him. He was great. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't doing, like, a set or anything. Was but that was okay, because he's just naturally but, funny when he yeah, talks. Yeah, his interviews are hilarious. I mean, uh, they had this guy from IGN, because it was in the IGN theater, uh, branded everywhere, coming out and doing, like, the initial interview. And he was trying to be funny. He was almost funny. He was almost funny. I guess after trying to be funny in front of uh, Patton Oswalt, he's, he had a foot race with Usain Bolt. <laughs> um, I don't know. But <laughs> that then, just as they always do, the horrible questions. Patton Oswalt, where are you getting your jokes, jokes from? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there were a fair amount of good questions, but there, were. there was, where do you get your jokes, Patton Oswalt? I wanna... There were three different people who were like, I want to break into... No, I want to break into comedy. I want to break into acting. I want to break into Hollywood. I want to break into being a key grip. The, I, that one was a joke. It wasn't yeah. a good joke. It wasn't it was a, a good joke. Like, his answer for all three of these people was just, just fucking do it. Just do it like, and keep doing it and don't I mean, quit. That was in... He even answered that question in the initial interview period with the IGN guy. He yeah. was talking about how... Like, there's more movie-making technology in your iPhone than Lucas had in 1977. Mm -hmm. Just go do it. Get right. If you want to write something, write things. Film it. You mm -hmm. want to act? Do it. You know? Um, but people had to ask anyway because they don't listen. Yeah. <laughs> oh. think asking a question to a celebrity will make that celebrity be like, Oh, you know what? You got the voice for Hollywood. Come here. Damn, come here. I'll get you all the connections. And we all know I have the voice for Hollywood. <laughs> So there's no point. <laughs> oh, uh, we were sitting near the back. And we were in the very back row. Very... And I noticed, yeah, yeah, this giant man walked behind me. Caught, Large beard. Caught out of the corner of my eye. I looked behind him like, is that, that's fucking Brian Posehn. Yeah, it was Brian Posehn. <laughs> and while Pat Oswalt was answering questions, Brian Posehn was tweeting jokes about the Q&A. And then Pat Oswalt started reading them. So... and. I feel kind of bad for the people who would have asked questions if he hadn't been spending time reading Brian Posehn's but jokes. But it was very funny. But I know that if their questions were anything like everyone else's, they would not have been nearly as good as just listening to him read Brian Posehn's jokes. Yeah. <laughs> that was really... It was... It's one of those things just about being live, man. You don't get that anywhere else. Brian Posehn was right behind us mm -hmm. doing a double bit through Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was a really cool experience. I liked that a lot. Um, after that... I ran out on you guys really quick because I wanted to see something that neither of you did. Um, so I'm going to talk about that for a minute. Uh, it's not very funny, but <laughs> I, if you are listening to this because you like my stuff, you're aware that I do a lot of tabletop gaming in the last couple of years. And if you're not aware of that, you are now because I just told you. So they had a uh, panel called the State of Play in Tabletop Role-Playing Gaming, and it had some really cool people. It had one of the uh, Dungeon World designers was there, um, one of the guys that runs um, Drive Through RPG was there, Ken Height, if you know um, that name, you know that name. <laughs> he was there. Uh, and uh, it was just a cool, laid-back sort of talk. Um, I was... Uh, 13th Age got mentioned, uh, which is a game I play and post for the internet. It's in um, previews right now. You can pre-order it. I recommend it if you like. If you wish Dungeons & Dragons was the game it tried to be, you will love the 13th Age. Uh, <laughs> but that that was fun. Didn't some nerds get upset that they said that 4E was good? No, the opposite. You would expect that to happen. Mm -hmm. But as uh, there, there's... If you're not aware of how terrible nerds are, they are. And uh, Dungeons & Dragons has gone through a lot of revisions and entirely new rule sets over the 25 uh, years? It's Something like that. It depends on where you draw the line. It's, it's an old game. Uh, but the, the la most recent one is the first one to have happened when the internet was in full swing in 2008. So the awfulness got multiplied. <laughs> And 4th edition, the current edition, that's about to not be, because they're designing the next one, actually, mm -hmm. uh, is a really well-designed game that's not a lot like what people had been playing for the 
few years previous that they got invested in, so there's a lot of nerd rage. And so as designers, they recognize, like, yeah, this is a really cool game. I like to play it a lot. I wish uh, the business end of Wizards of the Coast did better with it, but the designers get, did a great job. And you would expect that to get booze, but no, it got applause, and I'm happy, because that is an opinion I share. <laughs> Uh, so that that was fun for me. What did you guys do? Oh, I, we went to buy books, didn't we? Yes. That's right. Yeah. And bought a lot of books. We bought a lot of books. And... We went to the, um... Archaia. Um, Archaia? Archaia. Archaia. Yeah, we went there. Because they had, like, first. a buy one and get one free. Archaia, Archaia, let's call the whole thing up. Yep, yeah, that's yes. another reason I love they them. Had, they do great deals at yeah. conventions. Yeah. They always yes. have deals. The, the people that were working there wanted to be helpful so hard oh. to the point that they were fucking annoying. There's one guy who asked you like eight times if you needed any help because you weren't yes. holding a book in your hand. Meanwhile, yes. I was, so he never talked to me. I just, I just started hovering Are you sure it didn't have you? anything to do with the boobs situation? I, mm. it, it might have. Might have. I started hovering around Chip, though. I was like, I'm just, I'm just going to stay by you. Maybe he'll think that yeah. the book you have in your hand is for me. Mm-hmm. But, um, Not go away. We all got some books for ourselves. Got a book as a present for one of our bridesmaids, actually. Yes. Um, so, hey, let's talk about them now. We're time traveling. Archaea, is, what they do is just really cool, uh, really lavish, hardcover, uh, creator-owned graphic novels. Yeah. They do Gunner Creek Court. They, they also print the Gunner Creek Court volumes. That's included. Uh, Mouse Guard is a big... Uh, thing of theirs, they, they have a deal with Jim Henson. Actually, the things I got for myself were volumes one and two of like their uh, Dark Crystal spin-off things. Mm -hmm. I like Dark Crystal better than Labyrinth, so screw you. <laughs> uh, come at me, I don't care. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we, we did a lot of stuff with them. Like today, was it today, uh, today we, the we did the signing? Or was that yesterday? yesterday? That was yesterday we did the signal. Me yeah, mentioning Mouse Guard, if you're not familiar with it, get familiar. It's really cool. And uh, David Peterson draws and writes it, and he signed our books, and he's a really friendly guy. Mm -hmm. um, and today they had their big panel, and I love, I love their panels because they're not about their books, primarily. It's not a marketing thing. Mm -hmm. They just, they're people who love comic art and art in general, and they do a lot of uh, study into it. And they talk about it for an hour. And well, they talk about it for 45 minutes, and then the last 15 minutes, like, okay, here's how that relates to our upcoming yeah. releases. Please buy them. And I, I love it. To, uh, today's was the history of 3D comics, which I didn't know was a I, thing. I didn't know they existed at all. And I learned some really cool stuff. Like, the, basically, the history of 3D in comics is that a guy made a 3D Mighty Mouse comic to sell books on a gimmick. And then it became the hottest thing for, five, for months. five months. And it put a lot of companies out of business. <laughs> because it's hard to do, it's hard to do well, and it's expensive as hell either way. <laughs> yeah, how much did they say normal issues were back then when it first started? Cents. Ten cents. And they and were the, going for 25 cents. Yeah. Yeah. Which is and a then, pretty big increase. And then after that five-month boom, they, they lay fallow for 20 years until one guy went up to DC and is like, hey, um... I can make 3D comics. But he, he didn't know and how. And he lied he his ass off. But now he's So he taught things. himself to do it, and over the years, even though there's very little demand, he did pretty much every 3D comic for a long time, and he became super great at it. And he died last year. Oh, no. <laughs> and now RK is putting out, um, in October? Yeah, October. This really awesome looking... Um, I can't remember what it's called, but they have a trailer for it on their they site. They have a trailer for it on their website. Joiners? Yes. The Joiners. Joiners yeah. in 3D. It's uh, J-O-Y, like the last name, not like people who join. It's yeah. J-O-Y-N-E-R-S. The, the panel had lots of, this is Sunday today, but the panel had, everybody got 3D glasses, and they showed off some of the work for that book, so you could actually see it in 3D, and it looked and great. you saw half of it. Because I wore my 3D glasses inside <laughs> out, like, for the first three quarters of the panel, and then you finally pointed it out by tweeting it first before telling me. <laughs> And then the I realized... people need to know, I'm a journalist. And then I flipped it around, and suddenly my headache was gone, and everything was far more 3D than it was before. Look, oh, I looked no. at people, and they had the black part out, and I was like, yeah, I have, that, I have it that way, too. But no, I never checked. No, you don't. It was the white part. 
Oh, that was great. Yep. That was a great joke, and I, I'm glad I didn't tell you. <laughs> I do things like that pretty frequently, just about every day. If I have to go out in public. Yeah, uh, I'm excited for uh, the joiners in 3D to come out. Yeah. Um, that looks gorgeous. I don't care if the words are ass. It just looks so good. It looks very, very nice. Um, so that's why I love <laughs> Arkea so much. Uh, back to Saturday. Oh, wait, no. I just remembered when we were doing that signing Saturday. Yeah, that was the first thing we did. Oh no! Go. Oh no! Ahead. I mean the signing at the Arkea. Yeah, it was David booth. Peterson. I'm outside. just suddenly remembering some of the people that were around, and yes. I remember the people in front of us. It was this kid who was like 12, 13, 14, and he had his mom there, but she was she, she did not look like a mom who wanted a son. She looked like a mom who wanted to be at the club fucking somebody because she, she had an my... insane amount of collagen in her lips so and also she fake boobs. You could face tell. Face lifts in the double digits. It was crazy. She was duck face. This lady was one purple suit away from Joker cosplay. No yeah. lie. <laughs> it was I can I I kept trying to oh. not look, but it was so He's there. Also, that's where we thing, saw a lot. Go ahead. Oh, the thing that really weirded me about, about that, you said like the kid's like 12, 13. I think he was a lot older than I that. Really? I was like 18, 16. He was, he, like he was a little 18. chubby and round, so it made him look a little younger, I guess. But, yeah, but he, his face just looked like that of like a 12 year old. Yeah. But he, Obviously, was not. He was talking was about so going. Uh, he was talking with David Peterson about going into like college. He's talking about college. Like what college for like illustration yeah. would be best for for what he wants to do. So he's an older teen. Man, it, it just they seems were so an weird. Interesting pair. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I'm just going to this comic also, convention with my freakishly wants to be hot mom. Unfortunately, mom? Uh, we were there for a long time. Because David Peterson had a long as hell line at his artist alley booth that, I mean, you know, he's a nice person. He wants to sign all these books before coming over to do his scheduled signing at his publisher's booth, mm -hmm. which is where we were. So we were just chilling out. And um, this, luckily, their booth is right by a main aisle, like an intersection of main aisles. So, so it's where all the, like, semi-pro cosplayers hang yeah. out for photo ops so we got to see a lot of that we we yeah. saw a robocop running along that we thought was a robocop with a miss with a uh, unfortunately shaped chest plate because it looked like robocop had boobs but it was it was I actually got, a robo lady yeah yeah you so. could not tell because like she walked she right robocop. past me and then you could see her face close and you could tell, oh that was a, that's a that's a lady robocop yeah i guess that's the best way to fit into a robocop costume yeah like um like, all the male characters at Disneyland are ladies because they have the tiny bodies that fit in the suits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, let's talk about our purchases because most of our purchasing was done at this point in time on Saturday that we're filling. Uh, like we mentioned, you went to Dark Horse, you got the Zelda Hyrule Historia. And the Bioshock Infinite art book. Which Both we're using to nice. prop up our mic right now. Yep. Um, <laughs> uh, we the talk Zelda about one's our... better. The Z oh, man. Zelda one's pretty nice. I'm not sure I'd buy it for myself, especially after basically flipping through the entire book. Yeah. But it's a gorgeous book. You should go get it if you're at all interested in concept art or Zelda, especially the both of them together. And if you're terrible, they also have an official canon Zelda timeline, which splits off into three right. separate timelines. Thank you, Ocarina of Time. Can I talk about the Zelda timeline? Is that too far <laughs> off? No, go ahead. Is that... Okay. The existence of the Zelda timeline is the worst thing. I don't care about where they put them in order. It's the fine. That it exists. It's fine that there's a timeline for the ones that are actually direct sequels. Yeah, you don't need a timeline for that because they tell you. Yeah. But Zelda is great because it doesn't have a timeline. I ignore the existence of this page in the Hyrule Historia <laughs> forever. Well, it's like a quarter of the book. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> don't tell me that. Uh, All those brown pages. No. <laughs> I'm gonna do my Brian Posehn voice early. Okay. Uh, but it's just. This, the, the, the story, this classic uh, formulaic, honestly, thing, this, this just goes on and on forever, and now it's got a timeline. So now, when you make a game, people are going to feel pressure to be like, hmm, I wonder what happened between this one and that one, and that is going to suck creativity out of things. It happens... Anytime, I'm going to talk about Doctor Who now. Yeah. Uh, I think the worst thing, one of the worst things that happened to Doctor Who was the fans getting older and starting to work for it and starting to make noise about it because it turned away from this amazing uh, science fantasy where anything can happen to a thing with a history. And, and you, you put thing A 
uh, next to B, and you have to categorize it, and you have to linearize it, and, you ha and things that came before have to be respected so it closes off possibility. That's what I hate about yeah. the timeline. Yeah. It closes off possibility. Now, <laughs> I should have thought about that before I screamed for 10 minutes. Um, oh, well. Some things I bought, we talked about our 2000 AD stuff, talked about me getting um, uh, those Dark Crystal books. What were your Ar Archaea purchases? Oh, you shit. Got, you got a Gunner Creek book? I got Gunner Creek because I have not read any of it, and it sounds You're... neat, so I might as well dive in with an actual physical book. Yeah. Um, I got Mr. Murder is Dead. I have know nothing about it, but I love the cover. Uh, it's really cool on the inside. I, I haven't read this, but it's kind of... It's... There are parts of it that look different, that it's, look more like Sunday... It's morning. basically yeah. Dick Tracy through a 2000s lens, basically, just yeah. flipping through it, not reading it, looking at the art. Uh, and that's interesting, is all hell to me. Uh, let's see, there's a Gunner Craig Court, and then... Uh, you got a book called Tumor, which I got two years ago. Yeah, I got... This, this is fantastic. It, I, I can vouch for it. I got it just... Entirely because I love the edge, uh, the edges of the pages, because I, they're just <laughs> wavy, and, mm, I don't know why I like it so much. But that look, I read a little bit of that, and it looks neat. And there's Old City Blues. I have a thing for yellow and black, apparently, because <laughs> that's the books I kept picking. Uh, there's Dread 3, there's Halo Jones. Uh, yeah, mentioned those. Uh, th then I bought a lot of games. Yeah, you bought a bunch of games today. I bought Luigi's Mansion, I bought Shenmue, I got Last Story. For the week. That's that's a pretty great selection. Uh, speaking of games, I picked up the Gamma World uh, expansion uh, Legion of Gold. That for was five, five dollars. Bucks. Screw you! I got five bucks. It was on the shelf next to the other shelf that had the book simply titled Five Hundred Manga Characters," <laughs> which I think was like a CD full of like anime generic clip art. At the same store, I also got for five bucks. Um, Isaac Asimov, The Complete yeah. Stories, Volume 1. And that's like 600 pages that's a pretty of that, good deal. Uh, Asimov, for five bucks. Hell yes. I really wish that anime book was just a list of 500 different <laughs> Not even characters pictures, just their name. <laughs> just their name. Uh, got, um, for, my, my fiance is rather crafty, and she got herself uh, her first felting kit, because that's a new Looks really craft cute. to conquer, and it's an yes. adorable frog. She, like I mentioned, she's knitting currently. Rather crafty. Uh, yes. What you got some other I, Archaea stuff. Well, I got Halo Jones. Got Halo from, Jones. And then I got um, extra copy of uh, Mouse Guard. Right. And um, I picked up the second um, Fraggle book, which that, is a yes. compilation, uh, or it has a bunch of different short just, stories yeah. by different artists. It's really cool. Of Fraggles. Um, it's really great. First book is awesome. Um, and then the Lost Pirate Girl. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah which... Um, Just has a really nice cover. Mm -hmm. Really nice cover. Really nice interior Art flipping really through. Pretty. When we went back two hours later, they were completely sold out of it. Yeah. So, I kind of wish I grabbed that. Good. Um, if Arkea was the only comic book publisher left around, I wouldn't be that upset, no. quite mm -hmm. frankly. They make such gorgeous stuff. I was totally bummed that they were not selling the Jim Henson Tale of Sand. Tale of Sand. They had a sign for it, they but they a... weren't selling it. It's so if strange. If you're not familiar with Tale of Sand, uh, Jim Henson unfortunately died in the 90s because he was too nice to tell people he was having chest pains, uh. Uh, which is one of the, the saddest things that happened. I think he's one of the, maybe the greatest creative genius of the 20th century? Sure. I mean, at least in film. And mm -hmm. like, yeah, I know Scorsese exists. <laughs> Fuck you, Jim Henson. I can defend this opinion if you require me to. <laughs> uh, but he left this uh, screenplay that he was just polishing up and trying to shop around called Tale of Sand when he died. And uh, after his, his children, who, who own his estate and his company, started this uh, publishing deal with Arkea, they're like, hey, we have this Tale of Sand screenplay. Could this be a graphic novel? And they made it, and it won the Eisner Award for Best Graphic Novel, mm -hmm. and I've wanted to buy it, and they were sold out. Yeah. So that's the story. When yeah. I asked about it, here's a second story. Hor the, you know what the comic book guy would look like in real life? Oh, yeah! So yeah, this guy, this guy was standing next to me, and he Holy gave his shit. unsolicited opinion about how it's incredibly overrated, and uh, it's just from it's set It's kind of nice to look at, but you just go set, set piece to set, set piece, piece and nothing really happens. And then he left immediately! 
You know, if you have set pieces, that means something happens. You do not understand the definition of the word falling out of your fat mouth. Oh my... <laughs> I just love how he zipped. It's not like he ran away like, oh, geez, I shouldn't have said that. I'm so embarrassed. I'm so sorry. I'll just leave. This is My so work is done here. I must go. Yeah, it's like he just... He was I must out ruin to... other people's day. I have to give oh, more hey. dissenting opinions that are the opposite of others. Goodbye. <laughs> Got on his segue. I'm like, the salesman was like, you know, we've heard the opposite of that from everyone. <laughs> it, won, it won the Eisner Award. It's it's a good book. I wish we had it to sell you. We just don't, unfortunately. I'm like, yeah, I, I understand. That guy's an ass. God. <laughs> That guy. What an ass. I love that they are real. <laughs> <laughs> Which that, um, that book was actually the panel that yeah. they did two years ago when we were there. Mm. And like, which was which they talked about some of the other work by Jim Henson. But they that just was they showed his like experimental the shorts. They showed his yeah. uh, his early commercial work, his later commercial work. Yeah. His, um, and then they announced his the non puppet that. stuff. Mm -hmm. That's just so. If you haven't seen Jim Henson's puppetless work. You're missing some of his best work. I mean, the guy was just brilliant in, in his experimental filmmaking. Uh, puppets or no. Uh, so, I think that covers... Well, I did buy an autograph. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Peter. Oh, yes. Uh, my fiancé is the only one of us to take advantage of the big thing of a comic convention, getting original artwork. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Katie Cook. You want to talk about Katie Cook? Uh, it's your story. Katie Cook is a really great artist that runs an online um, comic called Gronk. It's about a little monster that um, is, is kicked out of his monster clan in the woods <laughs> because he's not scary enough. He's an adorable so little fella. he's exploring, you know, basically the human world and everything. By, by being this Everyone woman's has. third pet yeah. slash, slash adopted child. <laughs> yeah, somewhere, somewhere in there it's like a child and a pet. Um, so Katie Hook does that. Um, she also if you're has... looking for it, you can just Google search Gronk, G R O N K. Her website is katiekendraw.com. Yes, um, and she also has recently started doing um, a lot of work with um, some My Little Pony stuff. Yep, which the My Little that Pony she had comic. A crazy line, insane line. Almost all of them there for My Little Pony. Which yes. I wish more of them were there to appreciate her original creation yes. instead of. Like, Fucking She's, My Little Pony. She seemed very excited yeah. when I mentioned Gronk. I don't yeah. think anyone had you, for a while. Which there. is a shame. She does uh, just custom, like, business card size uh, watercolors. Card. Yeah. Like a note card. Yeah. But note card size, custom watercolors, five bucks. And no, they're no, amazingly adorable. Yeah. So sh you got a... I got um, a picture of um, her character Gronk with a little cat that resembles a cat. Back in my family home. Mm. <laughs> it's really adorable. And the cat sitting on the little monster's head. Yeah, there's a little half oh. shirt. So we were pretty much in Brony Central for like half an hour because yeah. this line was so long. Oh, when we were in that line, we also found all the homestucks. All of the they they were like posing <laughs> on. If you've never been to McCormick Place, which you probably haven't, uh, that's the <laughs> venue in Chicago where C2E2 takes place. Uh, there's a central. Uh, it's just just this big, huge, wide show floor, as you've seen at every comic convention ever. But in the middle, there's a, a small second floor. It's just a raised uh, food court, and there's stairs going up. So they had this posed on the stairway, like 15 homestucks in a row, leaning over the balcony for and pictures. And before that, we had only spotted two or like, three at the most. And, and I was like, wow, there's no homestucks. So there, there's just this density of homestucks while we're in the middle of the ponies. All on this balcony, and I gotta say, they look like they were ha having a lot of fun. I mean, congratulations. Even if they, they found maybe, their people. Maybe they are obnoxious as hell, but they are having fun. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, but that, that was fun. Um, are you going to talk about your... your Autograph? Yes! Okay, <laughs> let's talk about everything Peter Davison, because we've already talked about David Peterson. Uh, <laughs> man, I was getting really confused. <laughs> which, is this, what, 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 which man? <laughs> Who? Son <laughs> Dave Peters, uh, what? Um, so yeah, Peter Davison, if you don't uh, know a lot about Doctor Who, then I am going to bore you to death. <laughs> uh, uh, he was, he played the fifth Doctor, and, um, of everyone to have played the Doctor, uh, both like in continuity or like in all the spin-offs or non-canonical stuff even, mm -hmm. he's my favorite of all the ones that are not dead. <laughs> uh, and I shook his hand. 
<laughs> and he signed a thing. And I got a picture. And I took a picture. And, uh... <laughs> this isn't acting, I swear, I'm pathetic. <laughs> you are almost as bad as that girl at the P Doctor Who panel I know. with him. I was and just she trying was to keep it together. Just that, like, you touched Peter Davis and keep it together. That Be girl cool. with the Be tiny cool. stick arms who could not stop bouncing up and down. She was so excited. Yeah. Just waited. We uh, actually in that line we had a pretty good uh, look at some costumes because there's nothing else to do when you're yeah. waiting in line. There was a Bioshock Infinite one that was just the chalkboard that you have no idea what it means unless you've played the first hour or two. Yeah, it's uh, except they were in the wrong costume because it was the twins in in their their rain outfit from okay. the boat. But the boy twin was wearing the chalkboard with the heads or tails. It oh, was a no. costume mashup, and I I don't even play these games. What the fuck. <laughs> Uh, you don't play any new games. You, you're like I don't play any shooter games. I don't really play PC games, and I don't play new games. That you are three also, strikes against you are also Infinite. like two generations behind, kind of. <laughs> Chop, hurry up! Oh. Buy a PS3. You just bought PS4. Shenmue. You got no room to talk. Shut up! I play old games and new games. I have a Dreamcast that I bought recently. So yeah, since we talked about uh, the autographing line, let's just skip forward to the Peter Davison panel. He did a Q and A. Yep. Because he doesn't have anything coming out to promote. Um. That's not true. He's still in Law and Order UK, mm -hmm. which, if you watch, that means you live in the UK. I mm -hmm. guess. Is that BBC America? Or? Uh, no. It was. I don't think it is anymore. No. I think they cut it just to show Doctor Who ten more I, times a day. I feel like it was on for maybe like a week. Like I don't even know if it made it to a second episode. Oh, <laughs> well. But uh, he's a really cool guy. Um, being having left Doctor Who in 1983, and it being. <laughs> 30 years after that, <laughs> I'm sure he's heard every question that he's ever going to hear yeah. at least but 10 he's, times. He's good at making it sound like he's never heard it before. And he's, he's very really friendly. good at talking to kids. Yes. Like, uh, we were talking about this leaving, and part of the reason, I think, is because he is a grandpa. Yep. Uh, <laughs> you learn to be good at talking he's to kids. He's a nice kids grandpa. Once you are a grandpa. I would eat some Werther's if he gave me some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd eat anything if you gave it to me. Oh my god. Oh, oh that, no. that was a lot of fun, actually. Uh, just another low-key thing without a lot, a lot of stuff to say. Yeah. Uh, some people were those fans, like the lady with like the Dalek foam hat. Yeah. But you know, don't don't let people who enjoy a thing in the wrong way ruin your fun. Mm -hmm. Don't don't be that guy. I'm. I don't. You can usually that fix guy. that just by not looking at the, at the internet as much. Yeah, pretty much. Just just just. just just, just keep yourself in a vacuum for all the things you like, and they will never be ruined unless the creators actually ruin it for real. <laughs> Sage advice. So, uh, I guess the only thing, I'm looking at the, the schedule I made up of things we did. The only thing we did we skipped over on Saturday, uh, Comedy Mutant, featuring Brian Cosain, Mike Kaplan, and Mike Drucker. Yeah, that was good. Brian and the Mikes, coming uh, on iTunes, I guess. Um, yeah. I had heard some of Oh, wait, I went right to the come well already. Uh, oh, uh. I'm stealing Brian from oh, yeah. jokes. Oh, right, yeah. Right in front of us and to the left, there was a mom with, like, her little kids. Yeah. <laughs> at Brian fucking Posehn. And he started off with a come well joke. It was Literally a well of male ejaculate if you're not getting what we're saying. <laughs> it was so great. She had, like, <laughs> like a 13 year dip the old, bucket in. And then, like, she was telling them to plug their old. ears. And she's like, plug your ears. No. Then, that was as soon as the f bomb started yeah. dropping. Yeah. Then when the come well came. So that's it. We're out of here. <laughs> but she left her thirteen year old son behind. Yes. I'm right. Not, yeah. I'm not sure about that. I think they were probably gonna have a talk later. Yeah. About uh, what not to say at school on Monday. <laughs> Doubt the listen. Oh. 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 My goodness. Were there some str other strange people we saw Saturday? Uh, bring up your Twitter. Oh, oh no! The day before, when we were at the Sinai of Happiness, that was, there was like that ultimate brony there. Yes, yeah. the dude had like a ponytail going down almost to his ass. Actually, the happiest thing I saw on the pony front was this guy who's carrying like a, a pony bag. We looked bag at him and we were like a giant, a giant MLP bag, and we were like, oh, oh no! And, and then, then he, he sat down daughter. with his daughter, like, oh. <laughs> And then it was stolen by another greasy man. And, and, we're then, like, another oh, late, and no. then another one later. <laughs> oh. But man, he was greasy, and he was getting hot at the panel, and he was yeah. fanning himself with the My Little Pony calendar, and I love that. His, his, like, 
all the way down his back ponytail was so tangled that it was basically uh, like his tangled. It was, it was a dread. Being a dread. Oh. Yeah. Like, like one solid dread. One dread. <laughs> you get a bunch Actually, of you can link the hair up, then you had dreadlocks. Saturday was a really good uh, I th day for costumes. I yeah. like joke costumes, and I still believe the best joke costume we saw was Gwen, Gwen Stacy. Stacy in a neck brace. Yeah, that was great. <gasps> oh, that I, I was did great. Really enjoy the house from up though. The house from up. There's was some. Good. Yeah, man. That was great. I saw some more. We never saw that one up close, but uh, actually, the show's Twitter has like oh, Instagram yeah. shots of that yeah. one. The C two E two Twitter, which we'll get into when we skip to Sunday. Yeah. But, uh, the Comedy Mutant show was great. If you've never seen Brian Posehn or Mike Kaplan or Mike Drucker, I would recommend all of them after they seeing them. They were all funny. They're all really funny. Um, Don't go if you could potentially get very upset at a justifiable Holocaust of the Jews joke. It was really funny, though. It was great because the amount Everyone of thought that was Everyone just turned off this it. podcast. But no. Um, here, joke spoilers. <laughs> uh, it, was, it started as a time travel bit and how if, uh, uh, if time, we know time travel isn't real or at least ineffective, Mm -hmm. Because every Jew in the world, after time travel is invented, is going to kill Hitler. And a lot of people who aren't Jews, to be fair, but every Jew in the world... Would we'll want to kill Hitler. Would want to kill Hitler. And then it circles around at the end to being like, well, if you think about it, if time travel's real, all Hitler knows... Is all these Jews are <laughs> coming to kill, are him trying to kill him for some reason. Constantly. <laughs> He's always on the run from deadly Jews. He was really doing the only thing he knew how. Yeah. And, and like that's horrible, but it was very hilarious. I laughed because there was a lot of thought put into that joke. Oh man. I do I usually do not laugh at Holocaust jokes because they feel like cheap and easy oh. and just trying to be edgy, but man. And when then, it's a closed time loop that joke. That one was that one was the third one, Mike Drucker, right? Yes. I think yes. he started slow, but after that, like he blew the doors off. Yeah. And I if you read my Twitter you know I love tortured and dumb wordplay. And he kicks my ass at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> he was good. I think I liked the second guy the most. Yeah. He, um, oh, what was his name? Mike Kaplan. Mike he's, Kaplan. He's a writer on Jimmy Fallon. Poor yep. fella. No, yeah, um, I heard that. I was like, oh, no. But he was, he was funny. He must be the guy who comes up with the ridiculous skits that happen on the Jimmy yeah. Fallon show. Because those are good. Those, those are, are really good. good. And his, he was just... I can't remember any of his specific bits. Yeah, I Except about being a, a lonely fat kid. There was a lot of lonely fat kid jokes. Yeah. And then Brian Posehn came out. Lonely oh, I remember there was jokes. one joke. It was at school. Like, if you could be an animal, what would you be? Oh, and yeah. He said, I'd be a jellyfish because if you don't have a nervous system, you can't be sad. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That was good. And also sad. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, see, we don't hate stand-up. Just bad ones. Ta-da! The only problem with Brian Posehn is that I had heard half his jokes before on Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> but like half of it was either new stuff entirely or I just hadn't seen that certain routine. Um, there was, so yeah, Saturday we focused on seeing good stuff. So we missed the modern swordplay demo, the Taste of Medieval Swordplay. Oh, I wanted to see it so bad, but the good things were happening at the same time. I have no sewing machine, but I must cosplay. I wanted to see fat men swing swords and get tired. <laughs> we I, went, there were five, there were six. No, there were five, in three days, there were five How to Play Quidditch presentations. Yeah, one for children, the other four just read, oh, the first day we were walking by somebody, he's like, please, we need more people for Quidditch! The Quidditch tournament is going to happen! We need people to learn how to play Quidditch! <laughs> and then the second day, we were walking on the show floor, and this woman dressed all in yellow was like, hey, if you see anyone playing Quidditch, don't tell them where I am, I'm the snitch. And then I'm like, <laughs> you're on the goddamn show floor, that is cheating! Yeah. They're never going to find you. At least the snitch wasn't a fat guy this time. <laughs> On a completely different side of the building, place like, right now. They're on a, no, they were, on, they were at least on the same floor of the yeah. building. Yeah, but a completely different side of like, it. Man. They were across the entire show floor and a hallway. McCormick Place is a large place. This is it's like big. a quarter goddamn mile. That is cheating. <laughs> that that game of Quidditch is never going to Unless she has end. a GPS thing on her. Like, no. <laughs> oh. So I guess aside from maybe some small reminiscences, that's... That's the meat of Saturday. Let's get to. Today. I saw a Black Rock Shooter cosplayer. So yeah, that there's that. <laughs> I also saw a Black Rock Shooter shirt. I almost bought it. Ironically, I almost almost I almost bought a Keyblade. Ironically, I almost bought a Cat Planet Cuties T-shirt and DVD. Ironically, I didn't Kill see me. the T-shirt. I saw a DVD. <laughs> that was at the same table as the uh, Black Rock Shooter shirt. Yeah, I, rem I, I almost ironically that bought shirt. that as well, but I was able to keep myself from buying that, and instead I bought Shenmue. <laughs> So this morning, uh, we started today with the, the Cursed Black Pearl crew from the, uh, 
from the Pirates of the Caribbean trilogy, the first three films they were all in. And they like were nice. One of them was, was in the fourth. Yeah. They, they were nice. They were cool guys. Um, they seem to have a much more realistic uh, idea of their success in the industry than all of the diehard Pirates of the Caribbean fans in the yes. room. Yeah. Yes. Um, they knew. You're, you're a huge Pirates fan. I like them. I, I'm well all right with them. I appreciate them. They're fun. I like the first one. The you first almost had a heart attack when they mentioned the first one was 10 years old, though. I did, because God, yeah. I remember seeing it like it was yesterday. Yep. How many times did you see that, you and Louise, in, uh, uh, in theaters? Well, I, I, I went opening night Come um, on. to a midnight showing in costume. And now, what you, do, what you don't know about this lovely woman I'm marrying is that Pirates of the Caribbean is a perfect storm for her, especially when she was in high school. <laughs> because uh, there used to be a time when our DVD shelf wasn't in alphabetical order. It was Johnny Depp and not Johnny Depp. <laughs> oh, no. And she's also a rather large fan of, of piracy in, in fiction in, like in general. Okay. And she, she likes swords so much she's uh, certified by the International Society of Fight Directors for teaching people how to fight with swords on Not stage. Your fiancé could probably American kill me. Oh, excuse me, the Americans... Directors. But also so the you British can't... Society okay. as well. So yeah. you, you just can't do it in Canada. I guess. <laughs> Does the <laughs> British Society certified. count? Like, they, they're in the Commonwealth still. I'm sure your British certification counts in Canada. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know exactly how that works. Somebody look that up for us. Thanks I, in advance. I spent like three years doing it, so uh, it's a big, big fun thing. But they, they were cool guys. They were funny guys. Um, just a whole lot of reminiscences about funny times with the dwarf. Yes. <laughs> dwarf puking up on the green screen. Yep. Dwarf getting left behind on the island. Dwarf I, wanted to be spanked. Islanders chasing the dwarf, screaming "Mini me!" Though he's not Vern Troyer, he's a different dwarf. Yeah, you may not realize they. I, I don't want to sound dwarfist, but they do look kind of alike, especially. Oh no! Especially when he has his head shaved for that movie. Oh, yeah, oh. come on. <laughs> I I enjoyed how reminiscent they were. Yeah, and just how they were looking back on. Yeah, these were fun times. I didn't enjoy how diehard everyone was that was asking questions. Everybody was, like, was really? just like, pumping like, the fifth it's film's going to be a failure gonna... if they don't have you, who never it's actually be a had a fifth Pirates, line. man. I like Pirates. I, I've seen all of them. I would not mind another one because I find them fun. I thought, but it's I, not like life or death. I thought the it, newest one, the fourth one, was the second best of the them. The fourth one was the second best. I always heard that the fourth one was bad. Uh, it depends on what you want out of it. Okay. It's not a very cool... Well, actually, no. It, the, yeah, the fourth, that's the fourth one. Yeah. The, all, the one that just basically focuses on Jack Sparrow. It's, it's, yeah. not, really it's not a very coherent film. No. Yep. But if you just want awesome, ridiculous, uh, swashbuckling set pieces, okay. like yeah. Indiana Jones on the high seas... So you're you, saying it just moves from set piece to set piece, basically? Yeah, it's, it's kind of overhyped, but <laughs> I don't think it should have won that either. I don't think Johnny Depp's that attractive. <laughs> But why it was so, like, in an funny. adventure movie, that's good, is what yeah, I'm saying. And okay. that's why I appreciate it on that level. The adventure is fun. And it doesn't have Kieran Knightley, and it doesn't have Orlando Bloom. Good. And they were you, insufferable in the good. second and third. Like, yes, they were. The movies is because they're like, yeah. oh, we need this relationship, and we need to have all this stuff around it. Well, yeah. No, you don't. That killed it. It's no longer fun, pirate, what you want. When it got kind of serious. Yeah, you don't want that. And yeah. so... It, Threw all that out, and it was just back And they to didn't the even fun. do that part well. Gosh darn it. <laughs> yeah. No, they but did The way instead, they ended the last one was stupid. Instead, they had this great... Uh, they, they replaced them with a great uh, action piece where Johnny Depp throws a, a gooey crumpet, and it gets hooked on a chandelier, and then he does an incredibly improbable escape, <laughs> and as he's on his way out, the crumpet falls off the chandelier into his hand. Yeah. Hell yes! I love it! <laughs> uh, it's, it's just fun. Yeah. So if that's the sort of thing you want in your adventure movie, just adventure movie and not so much movie, mm -hmm. go check out The Fourth Pirates if you skipped it. I, I like it well enough. Uh, although was... it didn't have these guys we saw talk. Yeah. <laughs> so no, which is a shame. So I do hope that if another one is made, they bring some of them back, because I think it would be fun. But yeah. I'm also, not going to have a heart attack like the people who are asking questions if they don't. Yeah. If you are aware of the Pirates films, the, the the ones that did have the Black Pearl crew, you know that there's one guy named Cotton, 
and he never talks, but his but his parrot does. Like that's the joke of the character. He, yeah, he's a one note background part, and his actor was there. I did not realize that this man who never speaks. <laughs> is a classically trained actor who spent 10 years with the Royal Shakespeare Company. Has he has a be, lovely voice. Yes, the He's, most amazing Shakespearean voice like, in existence. The, the dude's more like high class in his accent than oh, goddamn man. Downton Abbey. <laughs> and he played a dude who, who doesn't fucking talk. I wish I could talk like him. I would have totally picked up Catwoman on Saturday <laughs> if I could. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you made friends with a cosplayer. I made friends with a cosplayer. The two of us were in the restroom. Both of you went to the Not bathroom, together. and I sat down next to a group of very tired, possibly professional female Batman cosplayers. <laughs> One of them was Catwoman. I sat down next to her, and she started a conversation with me. It's like, oh, I want to. I wanted to say that that I that she messed it up. But I messed it up really bad, and I feel <laughs> terrible. I, I just don't. I, mm. Oh, it's just okay. weird to have like a professional cosplayer and like a really skin tight like cat suit who's also taller than me start talking to me. It's like yeah, check out these, and she's like pointing out the heel. Yeah, yeah, all right. <laughs> where are they? Where are my friends? Are in the bathroom? the word that didn't come out that should have in that sentence was high heels. She was talking about her difficulty in walking around in high yeah. heels. This yeah. is what you told the story later. Yeah, <laughs> which is something neither of us have much experience in. I'm gonna check out Catwoman on Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, let's segue into something I was gonna talk about: the 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 ladies of comic conventions. Oh Lord! I, I saw a lot more unclothed butts than I thought. Oh, like I expected, butts. like you know, skimpy outfits, but it went a lot further than I thought it would. Yeah, here's here's my dilemma. I I think it's clear. That I, I really, I, I respect and value women, and I support women, and I'm a pretty staunch feminist. That's, that's clear, right? We're all on the same page in this room? Yeah, sure. I don't know how to do that in this context. <laughs> <laughs> like, it is their choice to wear these things. I should support them. They are wearing art. I should, I should enjoy it. Am I ogling you yet? I, you spend so much time on that stitching, I should, I should take a look at it from all angles. That was an impressive chain Am mail I bikini. Am I creeping you out? I don't know. That was an impressive chain mail bikini that you made. Also, I can see your under boob. I'm sorry. <laughs> you what? You that was almost the whole boob that was there. You you must want me to look because you put in so much work. Uh, it's creepy. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Help me out. What am I supposed to do? Help! Please, why don't you? Oh, you're dressed as a character that wears proper clothing. Thank you so much. Yes. All right. Like, yes, you look. Oh, very good. It's Laura Croft, but it's from the reboot where she wears normal clothes. Yeah. You you made a very nice outfit from a craftsmanship perspective, and it's clear that's what I mean. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> oh, you are so skimpy and nice looking. We're getting married on June twenty second. Please don't I'm think single, I'm single, so on I you. felt slightly less guilty. <laughs> Like that Marvel contest where they everyone was dancing, there was that lady on left, I don't know what she was, but she was very pink. I don't pink girl. The pink know. girl. She was either an anime or an exhibitionist. I think or she a might pony? Have, I, I think she might have been an anime. I don't know. I don't know what the outfit was. It was not large enough. No. In in the bust area. No. Especially for dancing. <laughs> I, oh my god, I've seen less ripples in, like, a pool after a cannonball, I swear. <laughs> <sighs> the Jello factory don't jiggle that much, folks. I could be here all night. I'm surprised she didn't win. <laughs> I, I'm actually surprised. She, she lasted one round, and then she was gone. She wasn't dancing very much. She wasn't much. dancing very much, but I, I thought she was going to win. Consider the judges. That's what we're saying. Yeah. I mean, the first time they were like, was, hey, what about her? And everyone's like, woo! She was totally getting it, her boogie on. She was kicking ass. She won. Yeah, she butt did. was shaking in every direction, and she was actually doing dance moves. I couldn't see a butt. I'm like 6'6", six, six, and I couldn't I see through the see crowd. I couldn't see anything. <laughs> I am 5'5". Five, five. Oh, no. Uh, that's a slight exaggeration on my part, not his, for the folks at home yeah. getting score. Yep. Um, let's see. Uh, what else? We're on Sunday. Oh. Go ahead. Okay, so about women 
cosplaying. Can we please talk about men and the fact that if you're going to wear spandex, you should oh, God. see some stuff out Jesus. there? Jesus! Jesus! There was a Mario and Luigi that were terrifying, <laughs> and I could see their balls. I don't want to see every outline of your job. Where Fellas, she's house? taken. Don't be showing that off. <laughs> I don't know. I kind you're, of figure you're... if you want to show off, and a lot of people if you do like meet people. If while you cosplaying. tempt my woman away from me, I will shank your ass. I would think that there is you one guy. To look well, it doesn't the, look well in spandex. The first thing I saw was a Nightwing who was clearly stuffing his junk with like yeah. three pairs of socks. Man, that guy meant business. <laughs> It actually looked a little cancerous because the socks weren't <laughs> the socks weren't staying in one perfect spheres, so it was kind of it was a little lumpy. That's why you wear a dance belt or something. Something. Keep it in place. Or just <laughs> smooth it out. How about a material that ain't pajamas? <laughs> that works as well. Just, just oh, you know what's big? Walking Dead. Do a character that wears jeans. There you go. Oh yeah, in that first day, there were those people that were zombies that were role playing really hard, and they started touching you. Oh, fuck I was you. Going to punch some bitches. Like this is like, crowded enough. I don't need you intentionally touching me. Do you, you, if you are people you know, out there who who cosplay, do not touch people. Like that's there's the way to get yourself punched. There's a saying like cosplay doesn't equal consent, and that's usually for people like pinching the bums of these yeah. people in anime yeah. outfits. It works both ways. Yes, it, just because you are a zombie does not mean you can touch my neck. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't do it. <laughs> you it looked like you almost punched one of them. I was ready to. I I have a personal bubble. <laughs> I mean, it was pretty small considering how how busy it was and you're yeah. going to bump into people. But as soon as you actually touch me, reach out and touch me. <laughs> Gloves are off. Gloves are Yo, off. Yo, I just remembered off. something else from the first day. Yes. Green Ranger was there and the whole world was pumped. <laughs> yes. No, that was Saturday. No, that was, was in that the, Saturday? He got, well, no, he got everyone pumped all the time. Okay. But, like, we, we saw most of it when we were in the other autographing line yeah. with Peter Davison. Yeah. Jason that, David Frank, the green slash white slash red slash red slash black ranger. It, isn't he also the gold ranger? Slash go, was he? Was, for, no, he wasn't. No, that the was original the red. red ranger came yeah. back to be the sixth. That's what he was. I was eight years old once, don't judge me. I was around that, t yeah. 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 I wasn't allowed to watch Power Rangers. Too violent. I, my the mom just thought it was trash television. It but is. But hey, you know what? I watched it whenever I went to a friend's house. After right. the first season, when they first like changed outfits and Zords, I'm like, I'm I'm an erudite second grader. I'm I'm above this. Yeah. <laughs> I was in first grade, so I was still way into it. Yeah. I, once I got the turbo done, I. Oh man. I'm oh, sorry, turbo. Yeah, that they say that's the worst one. I never got Why around to seeing Zordon that? die. I'm sorry if you're watching Power Rangers somehow and don't know that Zordon dies yet. They kill him to make everyone nice. Snape killed him. What the fuck? Uh, <gasps> that guy. Uh, we're all out of order. Let's talk about the biggest thing from today, which is the tweet board. <laughs> yeah! All right, th there's a thing that hap this happens in a lot of places. It happens in a burger place I go to, actually. Mm. They just automatically put up, uh, if you tweet a hashtag, they, they put it up on, on the big screen, right? And the hashtag was C2E2, and we stumbled on it the third day. And I, like, tweeted at... I just tweeted, I'm watching myself make inappropriate tweets at C2E2. And it went up on the board, and we had a laugh. And then a bunch of people started following suit. And I took a picture to let everybody know that we were seeing these. And then it just exploded. We, who was the person who wrote Hail Satan like a hundred times? That was great. Also, we should mention that Sunday was Kids Day. <laughs> and there was somebody talking about how they wanted somebody to touch their balls. Yes. We had Hail Satan. And there was a little, like, four year old. Batman right there. <laughs> we had advertising for a website on there. It a got lot. filtered out the first time, but if you just write it out instead of... If, if you don't make it a URL, it doesn't get filtered. Yeah. You, you can say faggot. You shouldn't. You absolutely shouldn't. You shouldn't. Actually, I said it earlier. About, I'm sorry. There were two... There were three people who were looking for us. Yeah. There were two people who found us. And that's the end of that. No. Uh, oh, no! Let's talk about these two people. They were both pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, just accident of luck. One was sitting next to us with his girlfriend at the, uh, at the Peter Davison Q&A. Mm -hmm. His name was Mike? His name was Mike. Okay. Uh, I gave him a shout out on the tweet space. He was a cool guy. Uh, would have hung out with him a little more, I guess, but we were both going different places. Mm -hmm. And there was another guy, I can't recall his name. His Twitter handle has a bunch of letters and numbers in it. Yeah. 
I, don't, I can't remember if he said his actual name or not. It was hard to, if he, if he did, did. but it, we're giant jackasses. Is oh, no. Thing. Also, there were lots of people, and there was, like, people waiting for free Marvel stuff, and it was also hard to hear because it was loud. Yeah, and he was he was a pretty cool guy, too. He, he seemed nice. to be alone. I hope he had fun with the con guy. Oh, no, he said he didn't have as much fun as he could have. Because, because the magic because tournament. Because the, the, the magic pre-release tournament, they were, they were doing something for an upcoming set, and yeah. the management bungled it. Those Watsy assholes killing everything. I wonder, I wonder how exact, because I don't know much about Magic at all. I played it like once or twice. Like, I guess he, he said they, gave, they promised them like a certain amount of time to, to draft a deck, and then they actually gave him half that amount of time. Okay. And then they screwed up. They, they lost the matchup list, so they had to oh, rematch up oh dear. everyone. Okay, yeah, that, I can see how you can bungle up a yeah. Magic tournament. I was imagining that there was somebody who's just, fuck this, and just flipping all, the, all over the tables while everybody's playing games. Lizards of the cost, more like, <laughs> oh. Boycott! Hasbro bought you, you're for babies. Uh, so yeah, I just said that thing I thought I'd never say. <laughs> I'm cool with Wizards of the Coast, man. They, they screw some stuff up, but they also make great products, so there you go. Uh, <laughs> what else do we want to talk about, man? We've covered a um, lot. I know there's some other things that were from Seriously, previous days. Seriously, get, get your Twitter out, man. I'll get my we Twitter out. We tweeted all the important stuff. Uh, this, this is the part where we'll put in an intermission, and then we'll come back with the quiz. <laughs> that, music transition. That's an Alka Hollywood joke for those of you who listen to both of these podcasts. Uh, you should. They're both good. Uh, <laughs> uh. Apparently my tweet rate has been limited because I have tweeted too much. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, yeah! The first day, while we were waiting for the comedy thing to happen, some guy just walks away with a megaphone going, Harlem Shake video! <laughs> yes. Harlem Shake video, please! In progress! Over here! Like... We didn't... That's too much secondhand embarrassment. Like, we were, we watched that stand-up the whole way through, and yeah. we still did not go to see the Harlem Shake video. <laughs> there was a... There was a guy I just remembered in... The, the comedy routine. I mean, there's enough Doctor Who's to maybe send that Harlem Shake video so back many, in time. There were so many to, to doctors. Make that worthwhile. There were so many doctors. There was a sexy Tony Stark who was pretty good because yeah. he looked good. Yeah, I, I love hearing about him today. Like, there, there's a speed dating event. There was like a session every day mm -hmm. of speed dating. Uh, it's the same. If you've seen the speed dating thing that got profiled on TLC, Nerd Geek, geek Love, the same or nerd guy Love, that runs that runs this it, it's one. It's the same organization. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we signed up. We got roped into signing up for King of the Nerds. Yes, that's the big thing we missed. So yeah, they haven't called us back. I mean, I guess they're still recruiting. They yeah. They tried to recruit us the second time. They tried to recruit the us the day after. And we're like, man, we and they tried to make it make it sound like. Hey, so you have you heard of this popular TV show we're signing up for? And she wanted to make sure no, like, that it wasn't King first of the Nerds. She at first, she said she saw us and wanted to talk to us. Then she yeah. said she's scouting. Yep. Then she said it's for TV. Really wanted to rope us she in. She really first. wanted to ease before us in without hearing, saying King of the Nerds. Before she hearing made King us of the guess the name of the show before she said King yeah. of the Nerds. She's like, she oh, kind of disappointed that we knew about it. Like, yes, oh, you like know anyone show. who knows it doesn't sign up. Yeah. But we did, and we did. So screw you, lady. No, they, they make you take a mug shot. They make you fill yeah. out a sheet. I had to write down three interesting it's things that people not, might not know about me instantly. I couldn't think of a third, and so you had me write down that I'm Hideo Kojima's number one stalker. I, I wrote down. Uh, I wrote down that I dig musicals. Yeah. I, I sing songs from musicals. I wrote down avowed socialist, so I don't think they're going to call <laughs> me back. <laughs> you know, if they really need if some kind of gimmick. If, if they can read my handwriting, I'm not getting a call. You might. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I couldn't uh, read your handwriting. <laughs> So, there, so, hey, man, double blind. I, I got it. You know what annoyed me? I wrote, th they ask your, um, like, your, your uh, education level. And so I wrote it down. I wrote down my, uh, my degree, my major, and my school. And I handed the sheet to the guy. And then he asked, hey, did you go to school? I'm like, point. Yeah, I went here. Oh, where'd you go in? That thing that I wrote down right next to you, <laughs> asshole. Things you asked me to write. How do you get into T... It's... I wrote it on the proper line. Um, so yeah, maybe there'll be news from that. It's doubtful, but maybe. Doubtful. I mean... The thing I'm worried about is, I would love to be in King of the Nerds just to be... myself, but the thing is, with the power of editing, they could make me just look terrible. Remember <laughs> no, the, remember you the, softy, you big sweetheart. Uh, remember the tester when Ego Raptor was on? They made him look like a crybaby, kind of? 
<laughs> when he clearly wasn't, and they were just being garbage? Yeah, yeah. Well, just make sure that you, you pretend really hard to buy in the bull into the bullshit of King of the Nerds, and maybe the they'll allow you to look good. Every time they see me, see me, every time I come back on, I'll just make sure... The first thing I always say when, like, when I enter a room is Man, Bazinga. TBS is great. Bazinga! When we were at the Pirates panel, there was another guy who asked how to break into the business. D yeah, oh that guy! God. Oh my god! Ugh. He was like droopy dog incarnate. <laughs> he was... How do you break into the business? Boo-hoo! <laughs> he was the most Boo -hoo. awkward person Why are you asking? Why are you asking, he man? He had no personality. Talk? And he was terrified. He was. But uh, how? What? Like, how do you? Uh, how do you? Uh, how do you break in? I, I like acting and stuff. I've been um, acting. He didn't say he was acting until like halfway through. Like after they had started asking the question, I was like, I hope you're a writer. I hope you're a writer. I hope you're a writer. I hope you're... He's no. He's someone who likes to carry stuff. Damn it! He's pretending to be on-screen talent. God damn it! Oh. He had. He had. Unless his personality just was sapped away and it exited his body because he was so nervous. I like, felt so bad for them having to answer that because they were trying to be so nice. Yeah. Well. But it's just like, oh, get a new dream. This oh. is not going to happen, dude. One thing we didn't do that I, I wanted to do, but the line was always, uh, and it was kind of low priority, was uh, there's a show on sci-fi. It's called Face Off. It's a oh, yeah. a elimination type reality show. It's about makeup special effects. If you don't watch it... It's a neat show. It's a really good show. And the winner of the most recent season is a guy called Anthony. He's from the Chicago area. Woo! And he's the <laughs> sweetest guy and head and shoulders the most talented that season. And he was there. He was doing signings. He's a really cool guy. And I waved at him and I wanted to like congratulate him on winning and maybe get a print of his sketches, because he's uh, a trained illustrator as well as a makeup artist. Um, but that didn't happen. That line and was always... Like, line was always pretty... people on. Yeah. Every time we went by. So, but he makes incredible work. He's so great. good. He's really good. He's absolutely great. Uh, so that, that would have been nice, but it was cool just to see him. Yeah. Even if not, like... Man to man. Oh, I got some things, uh, some other things signed. Yep. Uh, Paul Cornell. Uh, if you like Doctor Who, you might have heard of him. If you like uh, comics, he's done a lot in the last couple of years. He also just wrote a novel, and so I bought it and had him sign it, and he looked really happy that someone <laughs> in America bought his novel. <laughs> uh, as well as, um, he also happened to be the person who was writing action comics when it hit issue 900 which is the first American comic to do that. So mm -hmm. I, I, he signed a copy of that for me and looked a little less happy for that. Like, if I had a copy of Saucer Country, <laughs> his um, West Wing meets X-Files series that yeah. was unfortunately just canceled. Oh. That sounds like that would have been great. It yeah. is great. I've read the first half. It's so good, but I got it digitally. So there's nothing to... Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> But actually, and we, in order to get a seat in time for Peter Davidson, we sat in on half of the Image Comics panel, yeah, which is the imprint that does Saucer Country, and there was a question about it, because uh, it got canceled and it had a strong female lead. It had several, actually, um, as well as a few other things that got canceled that had strong female leads, and a couple of books that were written by female writers who aren't there anymore. So it was that question you always expect about, where are the ladies at, yo? And their answer was the same thing you always expect. Oh, it's coming. We're not ready to make an announcement. Uh, pay attention to SDCC. Um, I like C2E2. I like the vibe. I like the event. I want it to be... I'm not sure I want it to be bigger. I want it to be more... Uh, important. Important. Yeah. So that we get those yeah. uh, announcements. I want, the only... I want cool <laughs> shit to be announced here, damn the it. The only panel I can think of where they at least gave you enough detail, like, like oh, cool, was at the 2000 AD panel. Yeah. They, um, showed, they like, revealed some Peter stuff. Peter Davison had some cryptic things that you can maybe, like, yeah. combined with the episode that aired yesterday, you can sort of guess what might be in the uh, uh, anniversary special. Yeah. But that's not the same thing as making an announcement, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, I know on Twitter I saw the announcement, again, mentioning Paul Cornell, because I follow him on Twitter, he writes, um, 
Wolverine right now. Oh, yeah, that's So right. the biggest announcement I know of is the name of an upcoming Wolverine arc. Killable Wolverine? Call, Wolverine Killable. Wolverine Killable. And it sounds interesting. However... They didn't reveal much Is the else? name of an arc really that exciting? Is it that big of an announcement? Oh. Oh, actually, it reminds me, two years ago, The New 52, if you know about a lot about mainstream comics in the last few years, you know that uh, DC relaunched their entire universe... They renumbered everything back at number one. And that announcement came out like two or three months after C2E2 2011. So every DC panel, they were telling you all about how excited they were for Action 900. How excited they were for like this long history to be respected. And they knew in the back of their heads we're lying through our teeth. We're starting over at number one. Fuck you guys. Yeah. I hate that. Uh, yeah. Well, it's kind of a shame because that they're not trying to make it more important because I feel like if it, they made it more yeah started to make it more important it takes it would grow so much faster it does it, it really like takes it. one guy to like you know one company to get their exclusive like hey you want to hear the big thing send send your reporters to Chicago we got a big thing yeah yeah and that that could open the floodgates I mean it's grown significantly in two years oh, it's since huge you were there. It's man it's big year, the show floor could, doubled in size in two years considering this could be you know kind of kind of Midwest. Yeah. It's the only like one of really importance between mm -hmm. Wizard North World Chicago California. exists, but it kind of blows. I hear. Yeah. I've never yeah. been, but it's it kind of blows. Not I hear. A serious one. I don't feel like it's kind like, of just for fun. Not. It's not quite. As also, their venue isn't nearly as large no. or as um. They can't keep. Uh, they, they don't have the infrastructure to grow. Yeah. In Rosemont, the way they do it in McCormick Place There's here downtown in the city. There. And, oh yeah. McCormick Place is a great venue. If it's it's the biggest conference center in the city, it might be one of the biggest in the country. Actually, okay. it's got to be like top five, well, man. They have plans to expand it, and they're even making more, it bigger, along with not only floor space but hotels, mm -hmm. and the entire area around McCormick is looking to ex so, yeah. pop up within the next couple of years. It's the perfect place to do it. C two E two fourth annual. Get in on the ground floor. Come next year. Actually, we were talking. Uh, oh Jim yeah, I, we we might do a panel next year. Maybe we we, we don't know what the it'll idea. be about. I we don't kicked around the idea of making it like uh, just let's play in general. Like we don't want it to be about us because it would draw in a much smaller crowd. Because like, like instead of it being packed where everybody goes, this is a little more local. Right. Because like this isn't gaming. It's everything, but especially comics. Yeah, there's a little bit of gaming. Packs is like gaming. And everything connected to gaming. Yeah. There were some so small game booths. Like there was yeah, Monster Hunter you 3, could, you could Die play Kick, new uh, yeah. Oregon Trail. They had a selection of gaming-based panel, like video game-based panels. Yes. How do I get my character into a video game? How do I do that? Well, th there were other more like interesting things that yeah. would have had like industry professionals in it as well. There's something about this, like graphics in modern games or something like that? Something like there? that. Yeah. Um... So, I mean, there's interest. Uh, we have minimum three people who watch our stuff. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, we wouldn't want it to be about us because, like, on average we get, like, 12,000 views. Right? Somewhere around there, yeah. And that, that's worldwide. I mean, those people aren't all coming to Chicago. Uh -huh. we, we wouldn't be able to fill a room with just us. But, like, no. people who want to hear about, like, hey, you guys make these. What's hot and let's play? What the fuck is it? How do I start? How do I get... You do it, you goddamn How it. do I break into the let's play How industry? do you come up with your jokes? Where do your... Oh. Ironicus, where do your jokes come from? Ironicus, I'm so... I'm so worried right now because... I Did you get that disease where black people turn white? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are you okay? Yeah, Um. I guess... Hey, we met two people. It's out. I'm white. All right? Oh, my God. What? I kept it up for years. I never know this. See, this is the biggest uh, announcement to come out of C2E2. I drew a picture of you with purple eyeshadow. You were black once, and everyone believed it! Yeah, actually, you will you can go back. You can comb through everything I said. I never said yes to either. Yeah. I never said yes to Hispanic. That came up once. <laughs> like, there's more than two races out there, you racist. <laughs> Fuck off. I just thought it was funny to see, like... like all right, I'm going to sidebar again. If you care, it's one of, from one of two reasons. You're racist, and you may not know it. Or you care way too much about people's voices on the internet, and you may not know it. And you may also be a little racist. He so, sounds black to me. So oh, there you go. A stalker. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that that, that falls into the second one, I think. Damn you! 
Guess what? I'm taking ladies and also gay men. Actually, I wasn't available to gay men. Sorry, it burst your bubble. Oh. Um, I hope you find other nice gay men. <laughs> uh, so that's C2E2, really? That's the, that was C2E2. It was fun. That's almost two hours. It was bullshitting about three I would days like of to fun. Go it was great. To next year's C2E2. Yeah. Also, I, unless I get... Unless I'm afraid of getting fatigued, I will probably also be at the next PAX East. Yeah. I was almost at this year's PAX East because Slow Beef and Diabetes wanted me yeah. to come. But like I said, I was almost at this year's as well. But uh, I'm getting married on June 22nd, yeah. and that means uh, bills. Yeah. So I wasn't. <laughs> Something I just remembered. I'd much rather get married than be around smelly gaming nerds. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Something I just remembered, maybe it's it's probably too late to look for it now, but in the 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 podcast that Sobeef and all the others did for Are you Pax, talking about Craigslist? <laughs> I was... I, do you think anybody tried to meet up with people to fuck for C2E2? Let's find out right now! All right. Uh, I, this is a second intermission. Can, can we put some, like, uh, dubstep elevator music in here? That seems appropriate. Yo, I'm a YouTube partner. I can usually actually put that on there without having to pay money. I don't use Craigslist. Should so, I so, so search for C2E2? Yeah, uh, well, you can, you can go to... I, it's probably easier to go to... Do we want to do misconnections? Mi or, or, like, l personals? Let's... Let, okay, we need... Um, Strictly platonic? Hell no. We need... <laughs> We need probably men seeking women. Men seeking women, yes. But also, we want I... to get misconnections because I want to find Catwoman. Okay. <laughs> well, thank goodness for tabs in modern browsers. I yes. Uh, yeah. Technology is amazing. I I am all of those things. I'm. And then you just now I can search yeah, for C two E two. Search for C two E two. Oh, we got we got four. four. Where are the sexy nerds? Read that first. <laughs> oh, oh my. That is not a man. I'm looking for gorgeous women who want to go to C2E2 with me. Get a nice meal and maybe a movie. I, a cool <laughs> dude, black male, 5'11", but that's a picture of a sexy lady. She's doing the, like, sexy librarian thing, though she is only wearing a coat and underwear. This and, dude and is and just showing what glasses. he wants. That's not who he is. Is that a child's bedroom? <laughs> the wallpaper looks... This is a 22-year-old, come-hither uh, uh, college student woman. Who is supposed to be the picture of a cool black male, 5'11", 230, age 40. I don't know what you're expecting, dude. I'm a cool dude. Going to C2E2? I am. 30. My picture is G.I. Joe. Oh no, and Chris Redfield. Look at the other <laughs> picture. I don't know who to search for. Um, let me know if you're going. Just be white or Latin. <laughs> oh no, I'll be dressed as pictures I posted. I saw a Chris Redfield! Oh my god! Oh, we found I hope him. that was him! Too bad we are not women. Hey! No! Okay. Not even Chris Redfield? He can punch a boulder into lava! The weather's gonna be really nice this weekend. Would anyone would like to accompany me to the... This isn't situation? nearly as saucy as Pax. That's not even a question. That's just a statement. Anyone would like to accompany me to the C2E2 event. <laughs> That yeah. guy's confident as fuck. Yeah. That's probably Tony Stark. Yeah. That's probably the sexy Tony Stark. Yeah. Uh, mis it's all mis misconnections. It's all misconnections. Oh, yeah. Frog and snail host. <laughs> Today, we sat outside and moved inside. Coffee? Coffee. Dot, 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 dot. That frog was looking for a snail. We took math class together at College of DuPage back in 2005. What? You sat at the table all the way in the front of the back. I'm an Indian, my, you're Caucasian. We had some Oriental teacher. This has nothing to do with C2E2. What no. the fuck? Well, you, you have to research, probably. Oh, yeah, I didn't search yet. Sorry, having internet problems. Here oh, we go. yeah. That's the ticket. Lovely titties at C2E2! <laughs> oh, yes. This is women for women. While running wild with my dirty tendencies yesterday, I saw the most beautiful and luscious pair of breasts I have ever laid eyes upon. Gorgeous, full, supple, encased in a black corset and right for the motorboating. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was stuck waiting in an autograph line and lost sight of those lovely titties and the pretty girl they were attached to before I could bury my face in soft fleshy goodness. 
This lady had a purple flower in her hair and a black corset with a purple top underneath. If you are she, contact me. Send pictures of your boobies so I can verify you are indeed the fabulously beautiful lady I am searching for. You know, it might help if you knew what this lady's hair color were. About, yeah. how, about how tall. Long shot here. But you three were at the hotel bar at the Chicago South Loop Hotel. Star Wars tattoos, Transformer shirt, and your friend. <laughs> Also, I like that the third friend has no distinguishing hair during distinguishing hair. I wasn't too interested in that one. It's just Star Wars tattoos, Transformer shirt, and the other one. We chatted it up for a while about annoyed type things and what an ass my friend can be. You left after he spilled a drink on me. I, I guess that, that checks out. He's an ass. Uh, yeah. I really should have got some information from you. I had the black beard. <laughs> Now I could go deliver some sandwiches. Tardis girl! Where are you? I'm sure you had guys drooling over you all day who love machines. Uh, so this is probably unnecessary and unwanted. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say it anyway. I saw you around the con on a few times today. I was continually impressed not only with your costume inside the... You saw this costume! Oh! You told me about Wait, it. This that one? Yeah. Oh. This was... The one you were talking to me about, because I was in that uh, nerd yeah. game one, and you told That's me. A great costume. Uh, she was on the arm of a man, though, when I saw her. <laughs> yeah, she was. I'd like to point that out. If this gets to you, I'd love to buy you a drink and chat about your favorite doctor and why Don is the best companion. She yeah. might not agree. That's romantic. Oh, yeah. Stunning girl with glasses, wandering C2E2 alone and drinking a beer. I saw you and I wanted to say hi. I was walking alone too. Why didn't you say hi? Your hair was darker with blonde streaks in it. You had some really cute bigger glasses on too. Hit me up. <laughs> Stormtrooper at C2E2. Well, all these, there's a lot oh, of there's ladies. There's a picture with this one. There's a picture. Oh. Oh man. How are you? This is like Revenge of the Nerds. It could be anybody under there. My God! Anyone can show up you and don't say know I was storm... wearing the stormtrooper mask. There were some. There were two stormtroopers with Brian Posehn. This is probably one of the ten others. Oh God! My friend and I saw you right before we went out. We ended up taking a picture with a typical prom pose. You you grabbed our asses in the pic, but we didn't mind. Oh my! We just really want to know what you look like. This wow. was about 11.30 a.m. on Saturday. Oh, God. Why are storm stormtroopers copping feels? That's not nice. I don't know. She was all right with it. Lady Loki looking for Nightwing. Oh, no! That Nightwing's package drew in people. <laughs> it had its own gravitational pull. It drew in a lot. <laughs> it just continually drew in more pairs of socks. Uh, the best thing about this one is the title. I thought you looked amazing in your outfit, and I'd love to get you know you better. This must have been a different Nightwing, because that's oh, not true. Jeez. Uh, men's Casu men. Oh, no, look at Casual Encounters. We did? Oh, okay, Casual we Encounters. Did not. All I'm, of Casual Encounters. All of Scam them. alert! <laughs> I bet. <laughs> casual Encounters is fun stuff. C2. There's got to be at least one. Oh, Lord! <sighs> Thirteen! Any f Let's do these in chronological oh, order. Oh, yeah. Any furry's gonna be at C2E2M4M. Would love to meet a furry at C2E2 and learn more. I guess this is like someone looking for a gateway into the furry community. Looking to learn and experiment, comma. I, I ain't a furry yet, but I'm that willing... That guy doesn't even end the sentence. He leaves it wide open. I want you to teach me. Geeky couple looking for a girl for fun. Uh, oh, they're looking for a threesome shit. Looking for someone like-minded? Are you a Marvel or DC? Do you like to cosplay? Think Daryl Dixon is sexy? Are these gatekeeping questions? <laughs> do you need to just have an answer, or do you need to have the right answer? Mm. I'm a bi-curious BBW girl looking for a first girly experience. My guy would like to join in, too. Dang. Have... We could have walked by those people. <laughs> there are a lot of BBW ladies. Looking for a girl for some fun time. Another bi curious girl. That's the, That's same, the same ad one. under a different However, title. Daddy seeks baby girl. <laughs> 53? Oh, seeks baby girl sub. 
Perfect, preferred, but older baby girls are also nice. No sub experience is fine. Oh, redheads go to the front of the line. Pick gets you pick. Oh. Oh, Lord. I'm looking to hook up. Not at the convention center. Hit me up. But maybe I could go to your place or you to mine. Cool to meet someone while I'm on vacation. If this is up, I'm still looking. After party. After party. After party. Let's meet up. Ah, that one's really boring. Boring. Looking for a cosplay CD slash TV to please and play with? So, is someone going to cosplay as audiovisual equipment? I don't know. Would love to meet up, flirt, play, make out, make you feel like the gorgeous woman you are. Because I'm 41 year old and not sad. <laughs> Reply back with your fave cosplay. In the subject line. Man, everyone just looking for his cosplay girl. Oh! Wow. There's Power Girl, and there's her power. <laughs> Although I do not partake in it. I love girls who dress up cosplay style. Yeah. I have a fantasy where I make out, and more, with someone dressed up. Photos are of reference only. I imagine when he says he likes cosplay style, he like crosses his arms like he's really cool. I like cosplay style. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone care to help? I know you are out there. Because of the C2E2 in Chicago. Because of the C2E2, I am aware of your presence. Craigslist needs to add a, a, a feature where there's like a check mark next to anything that was successfully filled. Yeah. I need to know who filed their baby. I want to know how successful this stuff is, obviously, because I'm still looking for Catwoman. Anyone want to keep the cosplay going for another 420 or so? <laughs> I'm a 28 year old white man with a hard on for women in cosplay. I can host, and I have plenty of everything. Look at all my shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I want to see Spring Breakers so bad. Oh, here... Mutual. Go for it. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Who wants this one? All right. Horny male here for C2E2 wanting to suck and be sucked in someone's room in the same hotel. Man, you got a long dick if you can do it in different hotels. <laughs> <laughs> Looking all night. <laughs> Text this number. I'm average, built, clean, and 6.5 inches cut. Can text pics? Oh, the rest of you, or just the... I re oh, man. Uh, yeah, I've done it between different hotels before, and it's just a lot of work. I can do it. It kind of works like at banks where they have those pneumatic tubes that you put the stuff in. Really, you, you want eye of sight at least. I got telescopes. Fun top. Looking for quickie. C2E2 M for M, West Building. What's up, sexy, dirty people? Looking for a chill dude to find a quiet corner with and make out or fool around in another location. Oh, this one dude wants to do it there. Oh, yes. I was hoping there was somebody like that. Someone who has extra to hold, but not two tons of fun. <laughs> Just one. Cock size isn't a real issue, but no three-inch stiffies. <laughs> Man, I would... 12 noon is perfect, perfect because no one will notice a slip away. If you were there, you know how much of a lie that is. Yeah. It was packed, like, 11 to 7 all day. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. There are no quiet corners. I wonder if one of the dudes waiting was that role-playing Jack Sparrow who was sneaking around the bathroom. Actually, the only place you could probably sneak off for a quickie was the, uh, the tabletop gaming lounge. That's true. Yes. On mostly... Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody. There were some curtains up in there. Yeah. Yeah, right next to the kids' area. What are you thinking? <laughs> oh, freak? no. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey. Ah, I would love to meet up for some oral today in a bathroom. I'm with a group of friends, so I have to be discreet. Hey, hey. guys, I'm going to have to go pee for like 15 hey. minutes. Hey, so I'm going to go into this. I'm just going to the bathroom so my girlfriend can propose to me. <laughs> oh, but, wait, that's the same phone number. This guy's double dipping. Oh, geez. This, this guy, you cheater. Hosting younger C2E2 guys. Older Italian-American guy, 5'7", coincidentally his age. 195 pounds, hosting legal aged and above. Younger guys for hot, erotic, naked fun. Hot is all caps, naked is just capitalized. Yeah. I'm mobile. <laughs> I live fairly close to McCormick Place. Yeah, I'd, I'd hate to see that guy... Uh, some, somebody in an iron lung. I don't want to meet up for anonymous sex, but, uh... HMU, if any interest, with your stats. <laughs> stats? Uh, yeah, uh... 18 strength, uh, 12 dex. 
Um, I live alone and able to host, also mobile, you know, in case you didn't get the first time. So can pick you up, take you back. Back where? Back where, old Italian man? Where are we going? Taking you back. To, to the future? Taking you back. <laughs> and with that! Uh, that's like two hours. That's two hours. That's two podcasts, man. That's two. Maybe, maybe I will split it up into two. Maybe. <clears throat> so uh, I hope you liked the Chicago Comic Entertainment Expo. We sure did. I hope you liked us talking about it. Probably a little less. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, good time. Good night, folks. Good night. Bye. And then there's music. And then there's music. And then there's music. Oh, and uh, we should probably edit in the thanks. Let's before we cut it. Uh, thanks to Red Suit Talk for letting us steal their uh, podcast for one and possibly two episodes. Thank you. Thank you. I'm over here now, so I sound more distant. <laughs> good night again. Folks. Good night.